All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen, Town of Situates. Um, regular meeting held here on May 7th, 2019. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and have an acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Harris, seconded by um, Ms. Curran. Yep. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to start this evening out just uh, with a quick comment. And I really think it's serious that people listen to this, and it's not just the people who are here, but also people who are um, in our TV land and who are videotaping this. Um, you know, there are a lot of people who work extremely hard in this town and have continued to work very hard in this town. Uh, there are employees who, who go unnamed, who dedicate themselves to the town, to all of us. And it's unfortunate when you find someone who decides to ridicule and say terrible things about a family who's dedicated themselves to this town for the police, for the fire, for teaching, for postal work, for generations. There are many great families who've made our town what it is today. And there will be many families and people who do it for tomorrow. But unfortunately, I'm sad to have to say that out of my 12 years, I've never seen the horrible things that have been put on social media about the Stewart family, and in particular, your chief, your police chief, the person who's dedicated his life for health and safety for all of us, Michael Stewart. And I feel compelled to tell you this, and I think it's important that people understand that defamation and slander of character of somebody's reputation not just themselves, but their family, their children, their parents, should not, be, um, uh, should not be acceptable in any way, shape, or form. And I am calling out one of the candidates for this seat that will be filled, my seat, in less than two weeks. And that is William Tibbetts. It's a shame that he is saying the terrible things that are blatant lies to smear this person and his family. So I only just mention it now because, frankly, that is not becoming of a select person. It is not becoming of any person to attack people. It's fine to disagree. It's fine to say, I don't agree with you, and I'm not going to vote for you. But I want to make sure, as the chair of this board, that he has the full support of this board and of this town going forward as the family. That being said, I'd like to say <laughs> Are there any walk-ins? Representative, please. Uh, first of all, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wanted to give you a quick shout out. I know this is your last meeting, so I want to thank you for all your service to the town. Uh, I really appreciate it. I know it's sometimes probably a thankless job, but uh, I know that, as you said, the, the residents of Situ are grateful for all the good work that uh, Chief Stewart does. Uh, we're grateful for your service to the town as well. I'd also like to thank all my uh, friends and neighbors that are here that showed up to this meeting. Uh, I love seeing civic engagement, so uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, I was asked to speak um, at the very beginning. I have two more events that I have to hit in the district in Marshfield tonight. Uh, but I just wanted to say that I'm here uh, not only as a state representative for Situa, but also as a resident of Cedar Point. And I'm here to ask the board um, to hold off on issuing the contract for the new sewer system, the pressurized sewer system that's been proposed for Cedar Point. Um, in 2016, the CDM study mentions a pressurized system. It also mentions uh, the need for a study to look at uh, the issues in Cedar Point. Uh, we don't necessarily know if it's the main, if it's the laterals, if it's one lateral, if it's the whole system's junk. Um, and what I am here to do is ask you to hold off on the issuance of the contract uh, until we conduct a study, until we see the results of that study. And I've talked with uh, Senator Patrick O'Connor's office, as well as the uh, Baker administration. Um, once we see the results of that study, we're uh, more than happy to and open to working with the administration to change the language in the study for the Mass Works Grant. Uh, so thank you for taking uh, me out of turn here. I really appreciate uh, any consideration to what I'm asking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other walk-ins? If this is related, Dave, to the sewer, we'll, we're going to get to that subject later in our agenda. Yeah, I, 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 I don't, I'm not going to okay. that. Okay. I just have a quick question. Uh, John, uh, well, first of all, thank you for your service, Sean. Twelve years, was it? Yes. A long time. So, it's a thankless job at times, I know, and you're 
all the committees you have to go and, and I really appreciate everything you've done for the town. Thank you. So, um, and I thank uh, Representative Kearney for coming and uh, supporting what we're going to be talking about tonight. But right now, John, I just would like to know how you see the, the discussion going for the Cedar Point project. I, is the Board of Selectmen going to speak first or do you want us to speak first? No, so what we'll do is when we get to the discussion item that probably many of you are here for, um, it is going to be at uh, 7.55. Um, maybe a little sooner, maybe a little later. Um, we'll have a presentation briefly with Kevin and then um, about the um, current status of it, the contract. Um, then we'll, we'll open it up for discussion with people. Okay, thank you. So if you're here for that only, feel free to get up, walk around. Um, you're welcome to do that. Um, any other walk? Um, I'd like to turn it over to the report of the town administrator. Sure, I'll be quick because I know most people aren't here to listen to this. Uh, ice picking. We finished the last round of ice picking for the spring today. We did Third Cliff. Uh, once again, we saw fairly good results if you consider seeing black water coming out, good results. Uh, we've done Country Way, we've done the adjacent side streets, Old Oak and Park and the Driftway, <laughs> Second and Third Cliffs. Uh, so the, we've picked a big section of town. We get some very Graphic videos we're going to put up showing people how bad the water is in those areas. We've got good results right now. We're going to continue flushing. Uh, the reservoir is full. It's spilling over. As long as it spills over, we'll flush. Once it stops spilling, we'll stop flushing and conserve the water. So we're hoping to see some real good results from the water, uh, the picking and the flushing this spring. But uh, we'll see how it looks. Several other projects underway in town. Uh, reconstruction of Egypt Beach parking lot is going on now. That will be done by Memorial Day. New parking lot, new drainage, and we'll also be installing uh, a shower stall in there, outside like a Peggotty. Uh, Roach Field, current parking lot's being redone. A new parking lot is being added in the outfield. If we have funds left over at the end, we'll actually build a sidewalk along the outside and connect those so people will see those. Uh, the Oceanside Water Main Replacement Project is scheduled to start next week. That will begin with the installation of temporary water services. We expect that will take two to three months uh, this is one of the last night pre-1936 cast iron pipes. Uh, it broke last week, so it's a good thing that it's getting done. But because of the number of connections we have to make, it's going to be a long project with the gas mains and the existing pipes that are down there. Uh, the moderators' meetings tomorrow at noon. Uh, we only have one article in town meeting. Town meeting is Monday night. The high school is 7 o'clock. And the town election is the 18th. And we will be discussing uh, the ballot question for the senior center. We'll be on that ballot also. Uh, finally, just to update the board, I went to Norwell Town Meeting last night, uh, not because I really enjoy going to town meetings all the time, but uh, they were doing a app called Votes, V-O-A-T-Z, on your smartphone to try out uh, electronic voting at town meeting. You would vote through your smartphone. I want to see how that went. Um, they actually ended up voting against it, but you would go in, you'd download the app, You'd get a QR code from the clerk's office. You'd scan it in. That was your voting number for the day. And then when the voting would open up, you'd go through a series of buttons and actually vote. It took about 45 minutes to get set up. Uh, Tom meetings just kind of waited right in the middle of town meeting. And it was a lot slower than I thought. Tom meetings is actually faster just doing regular votes. So although I think it's a good idea, I think at this point, probably not a road we're going to get on yet until you get a little better at it. It was very confusing for some people who aren't real technology uh, savvy. If you didn't have a smartphone, they gave you an iPad. Uh, it costs 10000 plus per meeting. Um, if you don't have enough bandwidth on your Wi-Fi, then people are using their data. Um, people with one cell phone had good data. People with another cell service had so-so data. The key is you have to be there, right? You have to be there, yeah. right, because you get the QR code when you go in. You scan the QR code with your phone, and that gives you your unique voter number for a town meeting. So it really doesn't address the concern that we hear about participation of people. Yeah, you, well, it, I don't think it's legal in Massachusetts to participate in a town meeting without being at a town meeting. But there is a, a school of thought that it's very difficult at a town meeting to raise your hand to vote for something that your neighbor is opposed to. So by having a, a secret ballot, you would get different votes. Uh, and also, I know in one case in Linfield, we had almost 900 people at a town meeting on a standing vote, and it was a one-vote difference. So obviously, the people counting, you had the thought, well, maybe we should do it again with an electronic vote. It would be much cleaner. <coughs> but it, it is a little bit different than the, uh, the electronic voting where you get the keypad. Uh, that's actually quicker. But since you don't know how many people show up at town meeting, you don't know how many keypads to get. 
So you get 600, 300 people show up, you've wasted money. You get 600, 1,000 people show up, you can't use them. Uh, but I thought it was a good idea. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it. As I said, it costs about $10,000 per meeting to do. Uh, but they actually ended up voting down electronic voting at the end of the meeting. Is that 10000 on top of what it ordinarily costs? That's just for the electronic just voting. Electronic. Yeah, just for the electronic voting. So, but we'll keep an eye on it and, and see. But uh, we're actually ahead of them doing the electronic check-in, which I think people really like. So uh, that's all I have except for Pizza Palooza was outstanding and uh, crowded. They ran out of pizza early this year. So. Uh, I don't know, there were different categories. Seth's still here. He's uh, Seth. Uh, let's see, the guest, uh, the judge vote was CP's. Uh, the, the regular vote was uh, Harbor House, and uh, there was a third one, the kids vote, but I don't know. Okay. So that's all I got. Jim, one quick thing on the um, Egypt Beach. Denver yeah. also talked about leaving an um, outlet there for bathroom to go there at some point in time. Yeah, Kevin, at, at this point, um, there's no plan for the bathroom. We'll come back to do that later. But it is something that could be cut out because we're going to put a building on it. We'd have to cut it out with the foundation anyways. Okay. So, so we're, we're going to do the whole thing and then if we come back. It's right next to a pump house, so it won't be hot. Right. <laughs> Did you find out what happened in Cohasso with respect to the uh, sewer that they voted on? I emailed them. I haven't got back. I emailed Was that them. last week? Or was it's supposed to be tonight. Well, it's tonight. It's supposed to be tonight. Okay. There's some chairs if anybody wants. At least there's one here, maybe two or something. Yeah. Ladies, if you like. That's it for me. Any questions for the board? Yeah, I just, uh, quick question. John, what are you doing next Tuesday? <laughs> um, Nothing. <laughs> so just take a second. A few people have alluded to it. This is John's last meeting. He's been on the board of selection for 12 years. Um, and he chose not to run for re-election. Re <coughs> This is his last Tuesday night meeting. It will be a town meeting on Monday, uh, but then the election will happen and someone else will be here for the next meeting. Um, one thing, we, we got a list of, of all the accomplishments that the Board of Selectmen have had in last, since John's been on the board, it's amazing. Yeah. But the but one thing I wanted to point out is, John served on the Zoning Board of Appeals for six years before this, which may be more difficult than being a selectman at times. It's, it's, it's quite a more difficult role. So he, he almost has 20 years of service to this community. And that's quite amazing. Um, not only does it take up a ton of your time, as we know, meetings, uh, selecting meetings, <coughs> UBA meetings, but every other liaison that you're associated with, but it also takes a lot of your family time. Um, all of us up here know that. So he did it during the prime of his kids' youth. So baseball games, basketball games, coaching opportunities, dinners, awards banquets, concerts, all this sort of stuff that um, Many times played second fiddle to happen to be at a meeting to talk about something. And it, it's really a sacrifice that you made. And although we said earlier in the meeting that it's good riddance, he really isn't. We, we like doing this. We don't like the bad parts. We don't like, um, you know, some of the, the criticism that we get personally. But, um, but we do enjoy doing it. We do it for the, for the interest of the town. And that's what I would say about John is every decision that he's made for the years that I've... So John and I have been on the board together. I've been here for 11 years and John was the year before me at 12. Everything has been professional. Everything has been in the best system of the town. Um, over the years, we've disagreed, we've agreed, but it only lasted maybe to the end of that meeting. Um, but every meeting, we come back and we start again. And again, all of us here are trying to do what's in the best system of the town. And you really did a great job doing that, John. You separated yourself. You're in a difficult situation because you happen to work in town. So people can come to your office. People see you at lunch. People come up to you, and, and you're much more accessible than other people, and it's it's difficult. And you, you you handled it with dignity, you handled it with professionalism, and and you spoke your mind, and you did what was right for the town. Um, there's too many things to read, but I mean, look, there's there's six pages of things that we accomplished over the last 12 years, and you championed many many of them. You know, each one of us have these projects that we we're more involved in than others. And when I went through here. There was just circle after circle where you really led the, the charge on that. And it's, uh, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of energy, and I personally respect you, and I, I respect the effort that you put into it. I'll miss you, and, uh, um, and we'll see you uh, outside of this venue. But great job, it was a pleasure working with you.
uh, he's worked with me the longest, but um, I haven't worked with the least, but probably half your tenure. So um, I'm not going to reiterate everything that Tony said, but it certainly has been a pleasure. You've taught me a lot about government, um, about how things work, how to look um, a little bit more differently at, at issues than maybe I first initially came in. We haven't always agreed on the way we get to the end point, but at the end of the day, um, I think uh, many of you may not realize this, but I think this is a good example of a board that tries to arrive at a consensus for the greater good of Situa. Um, and I think you've been a great leader from that aspect, and I appreciate everything that you've taught me, and uh, I wish you well. Thank you, Ms. Sue. Sean gets to go last. <laughs> yeah. Nothing left to say. Yeah, no, I, I just want to echo, <coughs> as the new kid, coming in all, you know, ready to take on the world, um, having your leadership and example to, you know, how best to uh, address some very difficult situations is I very much appreciate it. So, don't go far. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'll start out by saying that I'm very glad you're not leaving town. I really enjoy Look forward to enjoy bumping into you around town and still to pick your brain for, for different things. I don't know where the 12 years went. I, I know it's been 12 years, but I, I don't know. It, it, it's gone by so quick. Um, I, I'm sure Tony just forgot to thank your wife because I, I'm sure there are a lot of nights you were running out to a meeting and the kids crying and she, your wife's trying to feed them dinner. And I know what that's all about. So I want to thank her publicly. And all your children for those events that Tony said you missed. But what I really am going to miss is being able to call you, whether it's selectman business or your profession, whatever it is, you always get back to me. And you are very, very, very professional. Like, like Tony had said, we don't always agree, but at the next meeting it's behind us. It's, it's, it's history. Um, I am, if I didn't know better, I swear you were from this town. You are so passionate about the history of this town. You know more about the history of this town than I do. And you're from Vermont, which really surprises me. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you, it, just go, it shows that you just really care about this town. And thank you very much. I've enjoyed working with you every single week. Really Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So on behalf of everyone in the office, Lorraine, Michelle, Town Hall, the board, we want to thank you for the little commemorative gift for you. So you can remember your time here. So thank you. Um, well, I, I didn't anticipate, I kind of anticipated something to be said. And I'm sorry that. Uh, I actually was thinking of keeping my remarks to the end, um, but I might as well do it now if it's the appropriate thing. It has been a distinct honor and a pleasure and a privilege to represent you folks, uh, the town of Situa, for the past 12 years. Um, there are times where people disagree and there are times where people agree. Um, it's never easy to be a selectman. You know, as, as Dave said earlier, um, I remember the first person I mentioned about running for a selectman, they said to me, John, it's a thankless job. Why do you want to do it? And, um, you know, I committed to doing it because I wanted to help. I realized when I worked for the U.S. Senate um, after college that I didn't want to work on the federal level. I thought it was too, um, too different. It wasn't uh, transparent. I didn't think that you know, people were genuine. I always thought at the local level you can always make a difference. You can talk to people. The difference is that you do talk to people. And when you anger people, they don't forget it. Um, but I always felt that's very important. And when you get into a community, be actively involved. That was something set forth by my parents. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Paul Reedy, Joe Norton, um, Rick Murray, and also uh, Mario Toole. But I have to tell you, I've, I've had the distinct pleasure of working with this current board, um, um, a selectman. I know my time with Karen has been somewhat short, about a year and a half. Uh, but we've been able to accomplish things and move town in a continual direction, a continuum. Um, I have to tell you, working with Maura, um, she did the best job I've ever seen as a chairman uh, the year that she was chairman when we lost our town administrator and she quit on us. Um, that was a really tough year, and I have to tell you, she did a phenomenal job, better than I could have ever done it. And uh, I've been very fortunate to work with her for the past four years. Um, my two, shall we say, uh, 
pillars of support on that Tony and Sean. Um, you know, we're only as good as the sum of our parts. When we come up with policy, and it's you folks who decide whether or not you agree with, with what our policy is, whether you agree that we should be doing this or agree that doing that. And there's so many different facets of this town that it's so hard. You can focus on one issue, sewer. You could focus on seawalls. You can focus on open space. You can focus on you know, schools. You can focus on water. You can focus on sewer. The long and short of it is, is that there's so many issues. And as a team, you work together. You're one of five. And it's important to maintain that. Because without it, you're not one. And it never should be about being one. Uh, so I've been very fortunate that we, together, have accomplished those things that are listed, Tony. It's not just me. It's all of us at various points in time. And um, I did look back over the 12 years. And I realized that they, we've accomplished a great deal um, as a board. And I hope that the board continues to try to address a lot of the issues um, in the town. Um, I want to thank Jim. I want to thank Lorraine and Michelle. Um, they've been excellent. The, the department heads between Kevin Cafferty, Nancy Holt, um, Mary, um, Pamela Cavalli, um, I have to say, um, um, John Murphy, Mike Stewart. Uh, they've been working extremely hard. And you know, one person I want to shout out to is Tom Grimes. Tom Grimes is a person who works in our town hall. He's an unspoken guy who works. He's there. He's cleaning the, uh, the snow out of the way. He's going the lines. He's making sure that the building's maintained. And um, he's a great worker, a great town employee. Um, I also want to thank you know my prior secretary, um, um, Kim Donovan, and Sheila Manning. Uh, they worked extremely hard for us and made us look good. And that's what happens. You know, we, we're here, but it's the people who work behind us who make it and, and make it for us. Um, you know, there's so many people to thank. Um, but the one person I really, truly want to thank is my wife, because to Tony, uh, to Sean's point, <clears throat> you never realize um, what you lost until you lose the time. Um, she was, she's been a backbone to me for this 12 years. Um, there are times I regret doing certain things, um, but she supported me all through it. In running for re-election, she was 100% behind me, and she is going to be extremely happy. That, you know, and doing different things. Um, but I have to say, whether you're spouse, male or female, you really need to have them behind you when you do this for public service because you do take a lot of knocks sometimes, but also, you know, you take away their time, you take away your family time, you take away time for commitments and things. So uh, she's been a saint all through it. Um, Anna Osterberg is, is by far uh, my best fan and my best friend and my true love, and I have to say I want to thank her for allowing me to do it, because without her sense, I couldn't be doing this, and she committed to this as much as I did, and so um, I want to thank her for doing it. Aside from that, um, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, so we should probably get the meeting going, but I hate to say this. There is one last thing I have to say. Um, as I said to you, you know, you're only as good as the sum of your parts. That's the key. You're in private business and public business. Um, we we're, we're also want to celebrate and, and recognize somebody who's had their birthday recently, but more importantly, um, a five-year commitment to the town. And um, we want to thank her. It's our secretary, uh, Lorraine Devlin. Uh, Devlin, she's worked extremely hard. I mean, she's there Sundays, making sure that the stuff is ready. She's there Saturdays. Um, if you go by the town hall, you'll see her car. And it's not a nine-to-five job. That's the difference. It, these people commit to it. And we see it, and it's public service that you folks see. We don't realize it, but it's people like that, the dedication. So, on behalf of the board, well, I wanted you. to say thank you very much. And we do have your five-year certificate for more than ten years, <laughs> and also some flowers for you. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, you could say. Yeah. No bumping, right? There's no disqualifications, right? No disqualifications for, for bumping. Okay. So you're allowed to do that. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, and that is on, let me see, the day. September 14. Saturday, September 14. And you want to just briefly say what it is, what you're doing? Sure. sure. Right. So, my name is Mike Matisoff. I'm a teacher at Central High School. I'm a resident of town. And I'm also the uh, Proud new president of the new 501c3 um, Friends of Citroën Facts. It's a nonprofit supporting the mission of Citroën Facts. Um, and so Barbara has been instrumental in helping get this started. It's really fantastic. Um, and so if you wanted to plan a fundraiser to support our mission, um, to support Citroën Facts, as well as to start a high school scholarship. So the um, event date um, would be Saturday, September 14th. And some towns have similar events around. Uh, it's, you know, it's like a rubber duck derby where people, you know, pledge a certain amount of money or buy a certain amount of ducks, and then we release the ducks, and they kind of float down a river, and someone wins a prize. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, the date would be Saturday, September 14th, and, and the general location would be um, at St. Mary's Ball Field and Parish Center, and on the street um, running along, which is Edward Foster. Edward Foster. Yes, um, and so the bridge, the, the proposed dropping points would be that bridge, um, which is the brook, the Peggy Brook. Um, and so the idea would be that it would be a family-friendly event, um, you know, with activities and games uh, happening at the Parish Center and the parking lot and the ball field. And then the, uh, the, the duck drop, I guess we could call it, would be sort of at a, a specific time. To limit, obviously, the closing of the street. We don't want to disrupt traffic. We know it's a neighborhood, um, but we do have, you know, some logistics here about about that, about traffic control, about police detail. <coughs> Questions? Um, just check the tide. So you don't have to go for that. Better than have a tide. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Question. Yeah. I, just, I have a question. When you drop them over the bridge into how far? Where, how far are you going to collect them? So, uh, yeah, so they, the plan is for them to go, no, not that far. So they will go in um, on the harbor side of the bridge, under the bridge, and then they'll just go short way into the marsh, really. Um, so they'll be corralled there. So people can still view from the ballpark if they've got small children with them or from the um, sidewalk side on the bridge. Okay, so, so they're going to come under the bridge. Under the yeah, they have to come under the bridge, yeah. Great. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Okay. I, in the back, I said the Harbor Master wanted to watch a practice run. Do you do a practice run? Let's so, um, for now, um, up until this point, all we've done is a stick drop, like stick, stick type of thing, yeah. um, just to see how it goes. Um, so it won't last very long, two to three minutes, I think, for the ducks to race. Um, and then the one thing we plan to do is be, uh, we're very mindful of gathering all the ducks afterwards and cleaning up. Um, so we aim to have some people in kayaks down there kind of keep crawling to one direction and picking up all Do you think you're actually going to have a... Big, I saw the picture. It's like a big truck on if, if all it, goes well. It, dep it depends on how many we sell. We're hoping for a big truck full. Um, <laughs> and if it's not a big truck full, we'll dump them from bins or something like that. Yeah. Um, so we get to decide whether we're dropping them in on, uh, from a boat on the water <coughs> side or over the, the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Questions? Motion? Questions for the audience? Go ahead. Move to approve a special event permit to Barbara Quinlan, Friends of Situate Facts, for the Dur Duck Derby. On September 14, 2019, from 9 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. Motion by Mr. Vignani, second by Ms. Curran, all in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. 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 All right. Uh, 725 discussion vote. Sorry. Uh, 720 discussion vote. Outdoor entertainment permit for Riva on August 2, 2019. Eric Tomlin? Yeah. How are you? Good. So this is kind of the usual, is it not? Um, Approval that you've done before. It's music on Friday. And, um, it's on here today, correct? Uh, yeah, the Friday prior, the first Friday. I don't recall. Were there any issues last year? We've never had any issues. Um, the only thing I can bring up is last year I was going to get a police detail, which I did, but then I think it was short staffed. But there were some police out there, we didn't have any issues. Well, we didn't have to pay for a police detail. Because it wasn't available. So. Um, questions at all from the board? Do you know your music yet? Have you contracted with your bands? Um, I think we're going to, we've done the last 
four years I was Collins, and then before that, um, I actually might be doing it with my band, um, mm -hmm. which I haven't done in a while, so I'm not going to say that that's a definite, but other than that, it might be just like an acoustic singer-songwriter <coughs> prior. Yeah, just with the Collins band, that they are so popular, so definitely at least to tell people. Yeah, I, I'm totally willing to do that. <coughs> No, we haven't had any issues. No, I mean, a couple of years ago, there were some things we talked about and um, going up on the roof and that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I so that's all made clear that that's that's awesome. yeah. So it gets, it's a very popular event. It's very crowded. It's fun. It's a fun activity. Um, so as long as you have someone there, enough people to manage the number of people in that patio, I think. For sure, yeah. You know, it's yeah. Heritage Days, so it's a pretty, right. pretty active. Uh, We've, like, doubled fun. the amount of security we have right. over the last couple of years, so... Just to make sure that everything yeah, is... and, and keep them off the street. Yeah, right. what you do a good job doing yeah. that last year. Right? Good. Motion. Move to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to read a restaurant located at 116 Front Street for a band on the patio Friday, August 2nd, 2019, from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m., pending scheduling of a police detail from 5 p.m. to closing. Motion by Ms. Burns, seconded by Ms. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. All right, moving on to a 725 discussion vote, Waterways Commission, Town Council recommendations for marine related matters. Ryan Kelly. Ryan. Good evening. Good evening. Gentlemen, good evening. This is for special council, correct? That is correct. So I, I believe that uh, the board is aware that we, we've, uh, got, we've received uh, grants on a project and it seems to have been stalled in the department of the DEP, and what we're looking to do is hire outside counsel who's worked in the town in the past to assist us in moving this to a favorable resolution. <coughs> we, uh, at the last one ways meeting, it was the unanimous vote, eight nothing, to make that recommendation to you folks. <coughs> Questions for the board? And the only comment would be that those fees would come out of the waterways fund, so it's not it's not a taxpayer event, it's, it would come out of their place funding. Yes, and we understand that. And it's clearly something that we need in this case because we could jeopardize losing the, what's it, $2 million? $800,000. Sorry, $800,000 grant. So, makes sense to me. Great. I, I just, I'm just curious why it's stalled on DEP. <coughs> if, if we can answer, if we can answer that question, <laughs> we, we probably could resolve it. Right? <laughs> okay. The ideal is that we want somebody who specialized in this. That is correct. As opposed to a general uh, attorney, somebody who knows DEP, dealing with DEP, and also if there's any further forms of litigation or action that he or she, in this case she, has her experience, experience in doing it, which is beneficial ultimately. Do you know Tara? Are you familiar with her work? I know her background, yeah. Okay. Which is good. And because there's no background on her, so I know if we're going to approve this. Do, we, do you have any history? I, I've spoken to her. Okay. I'm very impressive. Okay. Yeah. So, she, um, Jamie Madej has been involved with some other town projects we had, notably with the uh, lease for the Citrico Works. Mm -hmm. uh, she orchestrated that with the help of the Waterways Commission to come up with the right solution. <coughs> and uh, I think we've had a very favorable relationship with that group. Expertise in Chapter 91 in Marine Law. She represents the marine trade industries yeah. as well. Yale graduate. Yeah. So we will hold that against her. <laughs> well, the marine industries in particular, because that's a whole separate part, right. part of the law that we really need to know the choice. Right. No. So that's, that's always important. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any discussions? Any questions? Motion. Motion, please. Move to approve hiring of Council for Waterways Commission Maritime Related Issues. Second. Motion by Mr. McNamee, seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Very Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to a discussion about Archives Disaster Recovery Plan. Um, I think Jody's here. That's it. Thanks, Ed. Don't think Betty. Is Betty here? No, she's not. I think it's just you. You're in it. I think my one page thing. Sorry. <laughs> it's what it looks great. The number, it's the phone numbers and um, evacuation procedures for critical things and then water, because that's probably the biggest issue. Right. So I, I can start. They, they came before us before and went over this plan, which is very, very professionally done. And then I just had a comment about getting a one pager, because nobody's going to read a 30 page plan when there's water. 
come out of a pipe in the, in the basement. So they went back and did a laminated one page thing that says if water's coming out of a pipe in the basement, call this number or do this or do that. So I think that's where you'll get that all around the area down there. So if, in the case of a disaster, someone knows exactly what to do. And uh, the plan is comprehensive. It's, it's very detailed. It goes into <coughs> policy and everything. And uh, so I think you guys did a great job on it. Answered last time. Thank you. Motion. Motion by Ms. Canfield, seconded by Mr. Stairs. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Going to move on to a 7:40 discussion vote monument to the, to the East Horizon and Father uh, John Sullivan. So Sullivan, how are you? Great. Good evening. Uh, that would be, did you submit anything, John? I, yeah, I've, got, I've got some things. I just want to. No, I wasn't sure I was going to make, them up to make the cut, so to speak. So, um, the board had asked for three things. You had asked for a sort of a, uh, an image, if I could. Just yeah, that sort of thing. An image, language that would be on the back. Thanks. Um, and then whether or not, or, or I believe um, uh, Mr. Bignani asked me to get input from the Historical Commission and the Historical Society. First, um, I did speak to a representative of both the Historical Commission and the Historical Society. They're behind this. Um, and then there's a, a rough image. This just depicts what it would look like. Um, you have before your previous meeting the language that would be on it. And then, thanks to the help of uh, Brenda O'Connor, the chair of the uh, Sigil West Court Group, she really helped craft this language that we would suggest might be perfect for the back, although we're obviously open to any ideas, suggestions, or edits that we might have. I'll read it. It says, the proclamation of the Irish Republic, which took place on, in Dublin in uh, April, April 24th, 1916, is honored around the world for uh, where our freedom and human rights are celebrated. In Sigilith, the most Irish town in America, has been honored annually since the 100th anniversary of the Eighth Easter Rising in 2016 at the Bay in Sigilith Harbor. We, dedicated, we dedicate this monument to all the people who love freedom and to those who have fought and continue to fight for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness around the world. That's going back. That's going back. Exactly. The proclamation that was that I gave you last time. I just read. I was going to read that into the record. I just have a comment. Um, sure. I, I really like the verbiage. I just think you might you might need to just take a look at in situ the most Irish town in America and kind of. Yeah, I mean, we're the most Irish town in America today. Do you want to? Not that I think it'll change, but I don't, whatever, we don't need to talk about it tonight, but I think it needs to sort of just be grounded. Well, the reason it's in quotes is because it is at this moment in time. Right. And since 2010, the most <coughs> Irish town in America. That's subject to change with the next census. But exactly. At this moment. And that's why it's in quotation marks versus it not being quoted. But um, defer to my literary agent down on right side. I, I have to say it jumped, it jumped right out at me too. I, I like it from an ED, you know, economic development standpoint because it ties into a lot of the things we're doing and it yes. reinforces it. But this is a permanent monument, and I think that this state, this this stands quite well with in situated is honored annually. I don't even think you need to put it in you know, why it is. I think that is. As a permanent monument, almost, you know, that can be an individual thing more than anything. It, so, but I mean, I would prefer you guys to think through that a little bit more. I mean, that language can be deleted. Yeah, I, I think it works well without it, actually. All right. You could just put a year. Or is it going to be something that signifies the date that you're doing it? it there would be a date inscribed at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that was going to tell you when. Yeah. Yes. 
So and that either way works for me, but it, it did it did actually turn out okay. as okay. Does the board have any feelings about it? Because if you do, it can be changed. Well, I think you're hearing our feelings. <laughs> so I, so it can be stricken. You know, that's not not a problem. I think what you're looking, the guidance you're looking for, John, is to be able to have some kind of context, which is what this does. Yes. It puts it in context. Right. Yes. Exactly. And I think when you come up with a final, because um, I think that's what the board wanted, the final language issue afterward. Yes. Before it goes to, I um, can't say print, right. but it goes <laughs> to uh, the actual, uh, when they start carving it, right. you might want to just come back and say, here it is, it's getting ready to go. Is that acceptable? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Instead of the quote thing, I almost say something like in situ in honor of its you know long history, long heritage or something more general speaking that puts it in context. Okay. That works too. Sure. Yes. But I think that's what the board wanted. They just wanted to know something behind the mind that we put it yeah. in context. Yes. I think you captured pretty much ninety five percent of it or Brenda has. Brenda has. Um, <laughs> you know, that point, then I'd say maybe you've got the green light to go forward, start it, and then you know, before you finalize the final inscription, I guess I'd say just one last review. That's not fair to the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Group dimensions? The dimensions are uh, four feet by six feet, and the base is going to be five feet by 14 inches. So it's yeah. seven feet two inches high in total? No, no the, the base yeah. itself is 14. 14 inches in width and 5 feet in length. The thickness of the stone is 8 inches. But how, you said it's 6 feet six tall? Feet. Yeah. Right, so 6 feet on top of 14 inches is 7. But where's the grade? Um, the, That's tall. The width of the base is 14 <coughs> inches. I don't know how. The, the height oh. is not. I think it's about a foot or so. <coughs> but, so it's going to be like 7 yes. feet high. Yes. It's pretty it's big. Yes. But there's a lot of language that has to go on that stone, as you, as you know. So. Well, I'd also like to make sure we actually determine, if it's this big, seven feet high, I want to make sure that we're engaged in the placement of it, too, once we get a little bit closer. I'm really not clear on exactly where it's going since we're renovating the bandstand. So it's a little loosey for me right now. So I, I if that's tall. I didn't expect it to be seven feet tall. As you, as you face the bandstand, it would be on the grassy area to the left, and the monument company that I've been speaking with would supervise the installation. And as a matter of fact, one of the um, one of the people I spoke to said, "You've got to make sure that it is stable, so it cannot be tipped over." And so it would be there'd be rebar reinforcement, so that it would be stable. And it, but this is what this company. Can you fit the proclamation on something that? <coughs> Um, well, really tall for me. There's, a, there's a lot of. Uh, I I am going to try to see, maybe I can see if it can be smaller, but I'd like to also get the ball rolling to um, at least get the engraving done. I'll see if it can be done in a smaller, maybe six feet in height. Yeah, because I just worry about the weather down there too. The higher the structure is, the more susceptible it is to be. Blown over, right? I mean, you don't want a tall advanced here. Yeah. Right. But it, it won't be tall advanced here. No, I know. But, but it is grim. Yeah. Yeah. What I would like to see us do is like continue, but I think we need to rein in a little bit in conjunction with the bandstand rehabilitation and make sure we're all talking to one another and that it all fits nicely together instead of one group putting something here and then we come back and we fix the bandstand and we don't have that total vision. So that, that's, I'm not, and that's all I would like to see done. If I could respond to that, maybe <clears throat> then the, the start of the monument would be in conjunction with the construction of the bandstand and they would be in synchronicity with one another. And that way, one would not be done without the other. They'd all be done at the same time. That would be great. I think we sure. Both parties together. Plus, we have to raise the funds because this is all going to be private funded to do this. Although, as I shared with the board, there's been a great level of interest in this. So, I, I will just say I was unsurprised by the size. Also, I, I thought it was like a four foot thick small. So, I don't know how, how many words there are. Now, I mean, obviously, you don't want it minuscule, so it, it can't be read. There's got to be some happy medium where it's legible, yes. as well as prominent but not overbearing. 
Um, so maybe you can. I will see, see what options are. Done smaller, but okay. you know, obviously, I'd like to get the, the yeah. ball rolling if possible tonight. So, in that case, then, uh, <coughs> can you? I think the ball's rolling. It's just a question of maybe a s s smaller scale, John. So yes, maybe, I will do and that. Then maybe more exact location. Maybe if you could, maybe um, get a copy of the assessor's map of Go Parkway. Maybe we can then see the exact location where where you're proposing the date, which makes sense. <coughs> yeah, I, Lori, I do you know when. Um, we're scheduled to work on the bandstand. I mean, I understand our funds going to get released till July. Right. We're just working on the project. Okay. Planning right now for dates. And are you the lead on that project? Yes. Okay. Kevin Kelly and myself. Okay. Kevin so Kelly will be doing can I have a bandstand. All right. So can I ask that you connect with Kevin Kelly and Lorraine and sit down and kind of work the whole thing out together? Of course. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the location. I'm sure you guys will work together to figure it out. I just think yes. we have to figure out. What, what the right, what, and maybe we should all go down and look and see what a seven foot four foot structure looks like. It's a little small in the trunk. You know, I think you're hearing that someone likes the idea, likes the location, <coughs> likes the concept, and you address the contextual. So, you just have to work out the Yeah. 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 Yes. And Vermont Tech and Fresco, it has been suggested that possibly at, at the height of seven feet, would this monument be better served to be over at the Mossing Museum, where it's not going to be weathered, and the Mossing Museum has so much about Irish history, etc. Would that not be a better place for it? The Cole Parkway is sort of under review with economic development. Um, Moraine is going forward with the bandstand. I agree with Mara. I'm not sure that this is, not that she said it, the best place. We have an anchor going to the right of the building. So I'm not sure where that came from. And so you end up using space that might be better served for something else. I would strongly suggest that they think about the Boston Museum. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't think we can just, you've got to think about it, John, where you want it to be. I don't know that the people that manage the Muslim Museum want the structure they're either. So that <coughs> right. And I think, as you know, at the last meeting, the reason that this that location was suggested is first, it is a great spot for visibility. People are naturally drawn to the harbor. There's a walkway right there. That's also right next to the place where we have honored this event for the last four years. lost his So if you could maybe take a look at the scale a little bit, John, and then circle back with the name. Yeah, sure. And then yeah, be happy to then probably uh, once that's figured <coughs> out with the with the, with the, with the um, reconstruction of the renovation of the advance and part of the back of the board, just for one final time. So okay. and I think, you know, um, because you're looking to raise funds too, right? I suspect you could raise the funds now to try to at least make sure that you've got an idea so they can have any type of things. No, I, I don't think, we, frankly, I don't think the raising of the funds is really going to be okay. problematic at all. There's been a great level of interest since this was first honored back four years ago. This is just a continuation of this and sanction all the things that are going on in the time. Good. All right, then. And I think that works, right? <coughs> okay. All right. So come back before the board. Just email the range. I think we're going to source just to fit the, the thing. And then things come back to the board to follow this final list. Okay. And if you're, you're going to have a seven foot or something or six foot or whatever, you might need something just for a scale. The board might want to go down and get a sense of the state or something. I'll hide that. All right. That's not a problem. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all for John. Thanks for many years of service to the town. Um, going to move on to uh, 745 Athletic Fields contract. I see Mark Novak is here. Mark, how are you? Good. How are you? Now, this is in the paper. Should be it is. Yes. Yep. These are the bids. There's two motions. Um, yep. 
right, so went out to bid, the bids came back. Yes. We had three, it looks like. We had three bids. Three uh, bids. One, one from ranging from 9.8 million to one that was 14.8 million. The middle one was. 12.8. Oh, oh I'm, I'm doing the uh, bid alts. So oh, okay. I'll let you go straight across. So the uh, base bids were just without the alternates were 9.1, almost 9.2. The second was 9.5, and the third one was 12.8. Yes. And then you had alternate one, which is a resilient underlayment, which is kind of like that cushion, correct? Yes. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. And then the other alternate was, it's basically, those alternates were on the same price, and they were between 430,000 450. Correct. Um, alternate two is the organic infill. So this is not the plastic pellets. These are the actual... Yeah, like cedar or some kind of <coughs> organic material? Yeah, depending on the bidder, they did different materials. Uh, the low bidder actually did kind of a, a, a ground up coconut husk and uh, rice husk type info. So it's, it's all organic materials. And that ranged from 170,000 to 90,000 to 160,000. Correct. Uh, the one that, the first one with Argus, what were they, what, what's their, are they the most expensive? Thing with that? That was uh, ground up coconut. The ninety thousand uh, dollar alternate one is going to be uh, the wood, the wood, wood, wood and so. Okay. And then alternate three shade structures. What exactly is that? So it's just a, a, a structure that would go over the team areas at baseball and softball, okay. uh, just to provide some shade. And if it was raining, they could for the teams or for the uh, for the teams. Fans. Okay. For Kind of, uh, but it's it's not dug out. It's not completely enclosed. It's just a roof. But there'll be dugouts at the field. No, no dugouts. There'll be a chain link fence, team areas, separating them from the field and spectators. Um, the shade structures are much like the units over at Central for softball. They range from ninety thousand to seventy-five thousand to hundred thousand. Yes. And the um, company Argus, between all three alternates, came with nine million eight hundred eighty-five thousand. Uh, so Rad Sports came to ten million forty-one. Um, and then is it West Construction? West Construction. Yes. Came to fourteen million point two. Yeah, very high. And that's the bid we opened first, so you can imagine the look on our face when we opened that bid. <laughs> and the, um, the cost that we're, the total cost of it again was what, 10? Total appropriation? Yeah. 10.5? 10.5. So this one's underneath. What about the uh, bathroom? Is that still out there? So the bathroom uh, we put out to bid, uh, and we were to publicly open those. Um, at the site work was uh, open at 2 o'clock on April 8th. We were open the bathroom at 2.30, and we received no bids for that. So at this point, um, we actually reached out to the low bidder, who was Argus Construction of Bedford, um, to see if they would be willing to handle the restroom concession building as part of a change order to their base bid price. Um, and they are willing to do that. Uh, we did receive a number from them that was uh, just under 550000 which is $50,000 less than what we had originally budgeted um, and when we were doing our estimates for the project. Okay. Did you go to Rad Sport to ask them? No. Does that seem like the right thing to do? Uh, no, um, because, because of the base bid, uh, what was submitted on Argus Construction is the lowest qualified bidder. Um, no matter if we take alternate one, any combination of alternates, Argus is the lowest qualified bidder. Uh, we did reference checks on them. Um, all of them came back glowing. Uh, they are actually working for us at uh, Mass Maritime right now. Um, they're doing a lot of the site work associated with the new wind museum up in Boston. Um, so, you know, they, they've got the horsepower uh, and they're qualified. Uh, their bread and butter is doing athletic fields. Uh, Mr. Pedro and Mr. Cafferty met um, with Argus and myself 
and kind of de-scope them, make sure they're aware of everything, make sure they're comfortable with their pricing. Um, the reason why, uh, Tony, that we're not going back to RAD is because that would be a violation of, of the laws. Yeah. Questions from the board? Um, so you're not recommending any of the other alternate? At this point, no, because when we when you add the um, roughly $550,000 for the concession building to our 9.175, we're upwards of nine and three quarter million dollars. Um, and to take those alternates now does not leave us with enough contingency to get through the project. So my recommendation to the town is um, we spoke to Argus, asked him to hold his pricing, if he'd be willing to hold his pricing for the alternates, and he agreed. Um, so if we can get out there, start moving dirt, make sure that we're not running into ledge and other items like that, any kind of unforeseen stuff, mm -hmm. um, then there is the potential that we can add that in at a later date during construction. That being the alternates or the? One of the alternates, yeah. So, or or something. Uh, yeah. uh, so the underlayment you have to do the underlayment to do the organic, that is that correct? correct? Yeah. So that it's not a, you, one and two you have to go together. Yes. Okay. So um, it's over a half minute. Well you can do one without two. Right. But but, the but if you want to get organic you have to do a half minute. Okay. And the timeline on that is 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 significantly in the construction that you would have to make that decision of what the material is going to be? Like, what point is it too late to choose that in the <coughs> So basically, when, 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 when they're into construction, they'll submit shop drawings and submittals for, for all the different components that go to building the project site. Um, when they start to submit on the turf system itself, that's the time that we'll have to make a decision well, the on where we are. Yeah, okay. yeah I obviously, if, if there's room in the budget and and you're comfortable with it as a material, I it's a no brainer to me, but um, it's, I, it's not worth going over budget on. Yeah, it, it, it would take us pretty close to yeah. our budget. We got some time. Yeah, but we do have time which is, I'd say we use it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, my only comment is that five hundred thousand dollars for the concession stand and bathroom seems outrageous. It is high. Um, so I would say we put that up a bit again, and we don't pay them five hundred fifty thousand dollars to build a twenty by thirty shed. Yeah. Well, the only I think it would come back um, very similar, Tony. It's because it's a um, pre-engineered modular building. Um, so it's coming on two tractor trailers from Portland, Oregon. Um, Why does it have to be that way? Uh, that's the way uh, when we submitted our proposal originally to do the work, we stated that the concession restroom building was going to be a pre-engineered structure that gave an alternate cost if the town wanted to hire an architect to design the building, um, and the town opted not to. So what did you project that cost to be for that component? Six hundred thousand for the for the um, for the for the building. Yes. Oh, really? yeah. What size building are we talking about? Off uh, the top of your twenty by thirty, slightly bigger. Six hundred seven hundred square. Feet. Yeah, it's like uh, thousands. I'd have to get back to you. I don't know. Right. I I know it's bigger than what that. type of module? Steel. Uh, what, 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 uh, it, it's all <laughs> gold. Gold. It's, it's all um, block construction, and then it will be uh, sheathed with uh, cedar shingles. So it will match to the extent we can to the adjacent buildings. Um, you know, if if the town would like, we can explore, you know, getting a, a local architect on board um, to actually stick build it on site. Uh, but there is a time component to that. There's a time component to this too. I don't want to delay. I, what do you think the difference is if we had an architect do it and somebody build it? Are we talking tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars? Just in your experience. I think we could be around the, the hundred thousand dollar savings. I'm inclined to say 
can we get somebody to design, architect yeah. the design um, and then build it? I'm not sure whether the VOTEC could participate, but at least we get, even if we, well, it's about 30,000. 30, One time the VOTEC, Sean, that ought to be committed for next year. I do know that, yeah. you know, the, um, the contractor that we hope to enter into the contract with, um, you know, has expressed to me that, you know, he does have a, a qualified contractor that he does a lot of work with uh, that would be willing to work into the schedule. However, they can't do it on a design build basis. We'd have to give him a design so we could properly price it. Right. And then, and then we would go from there. Do we have to decide back and forth right now? Or can we just take the base bid? We can take the base bid, but I think we need to, if we, yeah, want, we, have to follow. If we want to go with the modular building, that's something that we need to decide sooner rather than later, uh, because there is a six month lead time. And, and that what's is the benefit of a modular building? Convenience, it just comes and gets yeah. dropped on the site. Hmm. And, it's, and it's manufactured in controlled conditions. <laughs> so you're getting a quality product that has a five year warranty. Um, so. so we're talking about $500 a square foot. This building was $400 a square foot. And we're talking about cement block bathrooms yeah. and kitchen. And it's all, I mean, it is finished stainless steel countertops for department of health. So um, it's their bathrooms, yeah. which, are, which are expensive. Tiny buildings are more expensive than larger buildings. Um, and it's coming from across the country. So, I'm sorry. What do you think? Total? Or build one? No, I think Seriously, can, we, can this I be phased? I, I, I don't want to hold the project up either. No, no I mean, we, 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 can, we can withdraw. We don't have to move on the building right now. My suggestion is we move forward, we enter into a contract with, with Argus Construction, and if we want to explore having a local architect do a quick design, we can get that price down too. Is something to be aware of. You know, the, the main goal is that we have the track and field component done for the Thanksgiving football game against Hingham this year. Um, if we delay too much, there's a good possibility. I, I would pretty much guarantee that the bathroom concession building is not done. Is that the end of the world? No. I'm you know, we can still hold the game. Still hold the game. Yeah. The bathroom. We'll have to get a temporary, you know, um, certificate of occupancy. Um, and they could bring out Portage on for that one game, and then potentially the foundations are in, and maybe we'll <coughs> stick for the game of the way. I don't think our goal would be to delay it. I just think this is no. I, from it. Yeah, so I understand. We would act pretty quickly to see if they can go yep. together. I, I, I think, from my perspective, I, I would like to have a design the stick built because I think you get a lot more flexibility that you don't get with two pieces that get shipped on tractor trailers and then get put together. Is two weeks enough time for you, for you to do a little bit more exploration for the stick build if you will? Uh, I mean, it, it would we should be able to get an idea what an architect would cost us. Yeah. Yeah, because it seems like a Well, let's, let's approve the, this plan so you can move Thank forward. You. Yeah. And then we'll just. But not the bid alternate. Not the building. And then the we board can board talk board. about what the next steps are. So that'd be great. Okay. Right. Any questions from the audience? Motion? Move toward a contract to Argus Construction Corporation for the athletic field restoration project up to 9.175 million, effective July 1st, 2019. Motion by Mr. Mignani, seconded by? Second. Ms. Curran, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. And we're going to hold off on the change orders. What's that? Just one change order. Thank you. Thank you. Or how much of a contingency is in that number for that? Zero. There's none? Zero. That's why we can't get it. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to a uh, 755 discussion vote. DPW, Dr. Jaffe, Director, and Sean McCarthy, Town Engineer. See Sean, so this is Kevin. Um, and we'll start with the DPW uh, event hall. So, Sean. Yep, he's here. I know that's what everybody's here for, the event policy for the For some reason, I can't So, um... Well, no, where are you? Good. Mr. Chairman? All 
All right, so this is what you came up with before, right? Yep. This is about basically when it's required, when PPW is being required to do things, charging certain uh, rates. Correct. Charging a rate and uh, the other change. <laughs> Great song. <laughs> the other change of. Uh, <laughs> so, any questions on the event policy? Is that what we're. Okay. Any questions from the board on the event policy? We talked about this before. Okay. No questions. I have a motion. Motion the board of select and vote to approve the DPW details slash event policy immediately. Second. Motion by Ms. Kier uh, Canfield, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The next one is that you're looking for a piece of equipment that the water department utilizes to make repairs and improvements to the water system on a daily basis. You're looking. What is it? I guess it also be utilized by the highway and other grounds. Uh, is this like a backhoe or an excavator? It's actually a small excavator that we'd be able to use in, in tight areas. It'd be very handy for doing services. Sean was good enough to put some pictures together of it. Well, um, cool. It's a nice That's small actual size. excavator. <laughs> um, we, rented, we rented one for a while last year. Um, it was a big help. And the guys were able to get a lot of leaks fixed. Not necessarily main leaks, but small leaks that go to different houses to service leaks. Um, and they have great luck with that. It has a lot more maneuverability. Sean came out and saw it on one of the water breaks and took a look at it. Yes. You too. <laughs> uh, Questions from the board? No. Just one question. Do, do we get like automobiles and police cars and things like that? Do we get special pricing with heavy equipment as well? Yes. Um, I don't have it in the backup, but if you look in the backup, it's got the list price on it. And it also has that discount, which is significant, because uh, we're buying it out of state business. Um, and it's very significant for the next piece also. Right. Any questions for the audience? Yes. Motion for the board. Move that the board is selected to award the contract to supply a 2019 Caterpillar 305.5 excavator and trailer to South Fork Milton Caterpillar of Milton Master. $69,800. Motion by Ms. Canfield, seconded by Ms. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. Now, this next one is a backup, actually, that you're looking for. It's a 2019 Caterpillar. Um, again, you're going to be using it with both the Situate Highway Department um, to make repairs, I guess, to drainage systems, daily activities. Uh, the cost of this is about one hundred and twenty-four thousand eight hundred dollars. One hundred twenty-four thousand eight hundred dollars. I think was approved at the town meeting for one hundred thirty-five thousand. Yes. Capacity. So this price was like one ninety-eight, Sean, just in comparison to this machine. Tony's gonna be happy. It's not. The other one is like two hundred dollars under. This one. This one. That's the closest we've seen, Sean. Two hundred below. <laughs> Blue Board Selectman award a contract to supply a 2019 Caterpillar 440 backhoe loader from Southworth Milton Caterpillar of Milford, Mass, for $124,800. Motion by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Ms. Second. Curran. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right, now moving on to the next one, which happens to be the engineering water study contract. Um, that should be in our handout if you haven't seen it already. Sure this is the RFP that's going out. Uh, to take a look at our. Can you just explain it before? The, obviously, Time Bond is looking at our water since uh, last year, mid summer, and now this was a water study that had been uh, that we requested, they suggested, and um, we approved that town meeting. Correct. So we approved money, and it was also money from the Toll Brothers project for the water study to do a complete evaluation. So, what's the study going to do when you say complete evaluation? So, um, we put out an RFP for a complete review of the 2001 water distribution system, complete, complete a study for future work to continue making upgrades of the system, um, do source analysis, take into consideration town's water wells and the use of the water treatment plant. Um, the study shall include a plan to look to future development in the town's water needs, including but not limited to 2030, 2040, and 2050. Um, 
and review the town's existing plan to help eliminate brown water. Um, it was actually a, a very large RFP. It was probably about 20 something pages long. We had input, we worked with the planning board, and we also worked with the water resources board. Um, we also had them involved in the writing as well as the evaluating of the proposals. Um, we had, we gave it to three engineering firms. Um, Western Sampson was one of them. They did the last water study. We've been working with Ty and Juan uh, recently in some of the water issues that we've had. And we also gave it to GZA because they did our twins of reports. So we didn't, we want to start with a company that knew somewhat or had some background working with the Um We evaluated the proposals and the highest evaluation came out with Ty and Bob. They received additional points. I believe they received 74, where Weston and Samson came out with 63.5. And that's a tally over um, a couple different topics and subjects um, in the grading of their proposals. Uh, Weston and Samson's came in at 78,300. Ty and Bonds came in at 99.5. So we're making a suggestion to the board that we want the higher one because they were higher rated by the um, and get the best, best bang for the buck for the study. <coughs> Questions from the board? Karen? I, I just, just because you went over this quickly, I really want to reiterate um, for everybody that's listening that this has been a long conversation to get to the, this point to, to actually um, issue a study that it's going to uh, address the system the um, source and the groundwater, which are the three main, you know, they're all very complicated things. Um, and the input that it isn't just the people sitting here, there have been so many people have, have reviewed and put input to make sure that we ask the right questions when we go out for this. So I just want people to be really aware that, um, you know, how we got to this point. I, I agree that, um, you know, I, I know Tony doesn't want to go with the highest price, but, um, I think that the, the analysis of you know getting the best product is thorough, and um, I think the recommendation is, is strong. So um, thank you for getting doing all the hard work to bring to this point. We're looking forward to the answers. And we all are. Um, and you know we were working off the 2001 study before, mm -hmm. but we hadn't completed the work that was suggested in 2001. So they were really you know we, we right. needed it's to get right some of that done do first it. before yeah. we before we did a new. So this will start after Oceanside's complete? Um, as soon as we award the contract, we'll get them started. Okay. Um, that was my question. Um, it's going to start after we award it, so right away. And one of my questions, but you did answer, you know, there's a lot of commentary in here from the planning board, so I just, you explained that I wanted to make sure that it was acknowledged. So it sounds like they were very engaged from the beginning and also through the evaluation. So, so I, I included I included yeah. that in the package so that everybody could see it. Um, Steve Pritchett was the director of Mass Water Resources for a while. He's a great resource. Um, and you know, we really tapped into that resource on some of his expertise. Um, he came up with his list of comments. He favored tying bond in the total proposal. Um, and what we would do is we would meet with Ty and Juan before we awarded them the contract officially just to go over these to make sure that they were taking this part of this stuff into consideration. Yeah. My, my only comment was, um, you know, both of these companies have worked so much in the town. I was really hoping to get an outsider to come in and kind of give us a fresh view as opposed to the people that had the plan before and the plan before that. Um, I don't know what... I mean, obviously we put the bid out to everybody and we didn't get the third response, so we just got those two players. But I just see Weston Sampson tying bond and everything here, and I was hoping that we'd be able to get, like I said, kind of a new new look at it to make sure we're not following one group's opinion as opposed to... Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I wish we had talked about it beforehand. I could have opened it up to more. I was thinking we would get better results keeping it with groups that have been working down. Um, so it still had that competitive process with the three the three engineering companies. And they didn't know if I gave it the 7, 10, or 12. Um, yeah, I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts on that? I was going to say the same thing. So you did not put it in the second register. No, not for an RFP. 
you're not required to by bidding laws. It's, a, it's an engineering contract. But the advantage is they have all this history with the town, but to Tony's point, are we just getting them kind of comfortable with those two? Well, I don't, I, how long has time involved? They're more recent. I mean, the water time. system, they're more recent. Um, they were here for the large brown water meeting. The only other really water project they did is they designed the water line um, on Glades Road from Bailey's Causeway out to the end of Glades Road. That's the only real water project. And they did the treatment plant. Long. They did work at the, at the water treatment plant. And then they did uh, the copper study also, which we were very happy with they because that, that also. So they're doing the green filter. And they're they, doing the green sand filter. They did the also. water projections, yep. the whole budgeting yep. stuff. So they've just been, they've been here a lot. Um, which is good and bad. I just, you know. I saw it when I looked at that and bond because they've only been doing it, I guess they did the green sand filter for two years. Yes. Right. I just, maybe because I thought that they're doing such a great job <coughs> last summer, um, and they seem to have a, a good push, but I can see what you're saying about are they too involved in it. At this juncture, I'd I kind of say no, but um, for the Western Sands, I don't think they'll be out, so feel the way you feel. Mm -hmm. They've been involved a lot for years. Um, but well, what do you guys think? <clears throat> I mean, I think our cost would go up if you brought somebody new in, if you were willing to. Why was that? Because they're now they have to start from square one, right? Look at all those previous reports that these two probably have already read once or twice, just to do what they've done. I, I see maybe. your I see your fresh maybe view. Yeah, absolutely. But you guys have confidence that Ty and Bond are going to come in here and we're not going to just recycle. No, so I think how I see the professionals, they're very yeah. good, highly, you know, highly um, respectable in the industry. But there are, they've also designed the green filter that we're having questions about. And they also design the other stuff. So <clears throat> you, you risk the other problem, Tony, if you go with an unknown and you don't get a good report. You know, by what I mean a good report that it's not as accurate or that right. isn't as good, you, you know, you've wasted your time. I mean, we've still in to us and Samson's credit, we're, we've still been working off their 2001 report. We just haven't finished everything right. that they've suggested, and, and we're making the improvements now. It's just that the improvements weren't made prior to that. Was there an estimate on Glades Road just you gave them a blank sheet of paper? They we gave them a blank sheet of paper, um, and we added everything everything that we had by the uh, by us. Um, by planning and also by uh, water resource support. What do you think? Uh, I'm comfortable with time, Bond. Um, I think they did an excellent job in very trying circumstances down at the water treatment plant. Um, I don't think people understand how hairy that got a couple times. Uh, so I think they did an excellent job. I think they'll do a good job on this. I understand the board's position. It will cost more. Uh, but if that's the way the board wants to do it in the future on engineering projects, we'll cast a wider net. But I think Ty and Bond, uh, we've been very happy with the work they've done. Again, that water treatment plant project was you know, really a, a, a nasty, nasty project. It didn't go exactly the way it had to go. Uh, and they really came through and did a good job on that because we found some stuff there that we weren't expecting. So uh, given that, given their familiarity with the system, I think we'll be able to do a really good job on this. But in the future, if we have these type of engineering projects, uh, if it's the sense of the board, we'll cast the wire net for the engineers. Yep, glad. Any questions from the audience? Is there a motion or a further discussion? Will the Board of Selectmen award the contract for a water study to Italian Bond of Westwood, Massachusetts for $99,500? Also by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great, so let's move on now to the soft topic of the night Cedar Point sewer contract. Um, so what I'd like then, Kevin, is just can you give us, or Will, whoever it is, just a brief summary of where we're at. Yep. Um, obviously there's a contract and how we get to the contract. Um, take questions from the board and then we'll open up to the audience, okay? Yep. That'd be great. So um, the proposed pressure sewer system is in accordance with CDM's recent INI study recommendations. 
Um, and what I'm reading off is one of our engineers, Dan, who worked on the project since the beginning. We a memo together on this. I'm going to make it as short as possible. It's a little long, but um, I'll get into it. Um, and permanently achieved, the idea with the pressure system was it would be 100% dye and eye removal for us, um, even with the rehabilitation less than at some point getting to the 50% if we did a replacement. Um, CDM's INI study indicated no one PVC can exhibit uh, excessive INI, therefore um, we were in favor of the pressure alternative for this system. Um, the Cedar Point gravity sewer ranked consistently highest priority in most categories of INI reported. Um, Moving forward, this work provided the biggest bang for the buck to help free up capacity at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, special precautions have been taken to protect the pumps and all appurtenances from the harsh conditions that are experienced out there. The proposed pressure system comprised of individual grinder pumps for each home, small diameter sewer force mains network using design, designed environmental one um, E1 pumps. Um, <coughs> in the priority package where everything's E1. Um, we also included a five-year warranty with the E1 systems and went with the heaviest duty model we could purchase. Um, each home would be provided with the force main connections, the E1, um, new sewer force main, um, service connections from the house to the pump, an exterior vent, um, interior, and underground electrical uh, and control panel upgrades. Um, exterior pump control panel is equipped for connection to a permanent mounted on-site generator um, if there was power outage. Um, all force main connections shall include two check valves furnished by E1 to prevent backflow. Um, one is inside the pump enclosure and a second redundant check valve at the street line. Um, all force main connections shall include two shutoff valves furnished by E1 again. Saddle connections to the mains, adapters, compression fittings are also provided by E1. The pump vents should be constructed of duct line pipe and include a check valve provided by E1 to prevent floodwaters or damage as opposed to the plastic pipe that's on typically on these. The packaged pump system would come complete with its own HDP enclosure and watertight cover. Um, due to the harsh conditions at Cedar Point, the pumps would be located safely below ground with a reinforced concrete precast enclosure with a 30-inch blocking manhole cover on top of that to protect the pump. So force mains would be made of high-density pipe. HDPE was selected over tra traditional PVC um, for improved water tightness because there's no joints, extreme strength, and resiliency. Um, in talking to Dan, he made that clear because it's the only pipe that's approved in California even with the um, earthquakes because the, the actual joints are stronger than the pipe themselves. Um, terminal and clean out access manhole provided on the force main in accordance um, with good sanitary engineering practices. And um, also we have a system in there so that we can monitor flows and see how the flows are going throughout the system and see if there is a, uh, is a problem. Um, so that's where we went. We worked off that. Um, designed a solution which would eliminate as much INI as possible. And that's how we came up with the pressure system. And the system that's designed is, um, it, it's the Cadillac of systems. I mean, Karen, you have a, your system's working fine, but this one has stuck the line pipe for the vents. It's, it's in a precast manhole enclosure, and it's really built heavy. We didn't no, we didn't, I'm sorry. Um, so, we went to that position. We had some <coughs> meetings with the residents um, in the past. Um, and there was questions on ownership of the pumps. And, you know, since then we also had received a grant for $2 million, $2.2 .2 million <coughs> from um, Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development in October. John, can I just recap our meeting and maybe save some sure. conversations? Um, so on Saturday, John and myself and Jim and Kevin and Patrick Kearney and a, a handful of residents, Dave Ball and, and some of the other members of the audience were, were there. And we met and talked about this for hours. Um, and I'm going to try and summarize it to save 
some repetitive conversation later and also kind of show both sides of the argument. So um, the first thing someone mentioned, the I&I &I in that area, that's the worst area in town for I&I, &I, which is where we process seawater or fresh water in our sewage treatment plant. They estimate about 10% or 40,000 gallons a day, we process from seawater pumping through that instead of waste. Um, the main issues with the, the group that was there were the pumps, right? So gravity, felt, gravity system, you don't have pumps, so you lose power, you don't have a problem with your sewer. This one is a pressure system, which is better because you know when leaks are, because it's pressurized, but you need power. And you guys have storms down there, so sometimes you lose power. Um, so the, the, the questions regarding the pumps were, A, how are you going to get power to us, and B, if there's a lot of rocks and stuff there, how are you going to get access to give us power? Um, so we talked about, John had, a, had a, a, an opinion that we should buy the pumps, the town would own the pumps, the town would replace the pumps, the town would get a truck to manage and power up those pumps. So we'll try and deal with that. Um, the other uh, comment from the group was that maybe the problem is just some la a few of the laterals. There's 120 houses out there, and a number was thrown out is maybe the problem is just 10 laterals and it's going to be a lot less money to repair than replacing the whole system. Personally, I don't, I think if it was just 10 laterals we would have found it, but, but that is, that's what the problem was. Let's look at it a little bit more and see if it's not such a big problem and we can fix it through doing another test. I think there was a $20,000 test that we could do that may be able to evaluate that. Um, a couple of the other issues that came up where there's a grant, there's a $2 million grant that we have, that there is not high risk, but not low risk. There's some risk that we would lose that grant if we don't act on this project soon. And by doing this testing, and, and if we were to change to a gravity system, there's a possibility that we could lose that money. If we lose that, lost that money, then part or all of the project may turn into a betterment to the 120 homes out there. So. Um, that it could be an additional cost to the homeowners out in that area it was discussed as well. Um, so that's, those were the, there were a lot of conversations about other things, but those are the main salient points of what's going on here. The, the group would like us to do another test um, and see if there is a smaller problem than what we think there may be. Um, the timing of that test is an issue with water tables and with, um, with summer, 4th of July, you don't want to start tearing up the streets in the middle of summer, um, and how much that would delay actually doing that project. And then we talked about whether, if that test came back and said that a gravity system, not, I mean, excuse me, a uh, low pressure system was what was needed here, are we going to be able to move forward then? Are we going to start back at the beginning and, and have problems with this other stuff? So the board has to decide which system they like. The board has to decide whether they, if we do want to do the little pressure, whether we do want to take ownership of the pumps. And then um, we've got legislative people working on seeing if we can postpone that grant so we don't lose the $2 million. And we've got Kevin working on how quickly we can get a study done to see if the problem is not as big as it possibly could be. The only other thing I'll mention is that that system is 50 years old. Um, it is, you know, we relined it. 20 years ago, the mains, but the system's 50 years old. And that's that's what our problem in town is right now, right? We've got pipes that are 100 years old, they're 50 years old, they're 75 years old, and they're not supposed to be around that long. They're supposed to be replaced. So town administrator's opinion is if we're in there doing work, while we're in there digging up the road, it makes sense to fix the whole thing, not just fix 120 laterals, um, because more than likely, there's problems with the main also, and if not, there will be within the next decade, and we'll have to do it again. So, did I do a good job, Dave? You did. Yes. <laughs> right. Let me just have one other thing yeah. for the options for the board. Okay, um, what has been scoped was a pressurized system. The other three options, as I understand them, we do nothing. We just leave it, we'll continue with the I&I, &I, uh, and we go on and hope that we don't exceed our average daily capacity at the plant, which will kick off a whole series of other problems. <coughs> uh, the pressure system, you can replace the existing gravity sore, which is a very deep 17 to 18 feet in some areas, gravity sore. Uh, that would be a big project, um, really massive construction. Or you would do a, what I would say is a shallow gravity system, but that would require the construction of pumping stations 
Uh, one some in the neighborhood of the Sand Hills parking lot, the other in the neighborhood of the Lighthouse parking lot uh, because they'd have to be pumped through the gravity wouldn't work. So those really are the, the options uh, that the town has. Again, as Kevin said, 2016 study did say to put in a pressurized system. It was voted at 2017 town meeting. <coughs> So the DPW went forward with that system, and that's why we're here today. And the cost of a gravity you estimated would be maybe twice as much as yeah, as the pressure. <coughs> Questions from the board? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm actually. I, could we defer our questions to we have some of the advocates' opinions as well? Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Um, I'm going to let everybody ask questions. Laura? Uh, I have a question before we get to that. Um, did Taiwan give you back the, the pros and cons of pressure versus gravity? You know, it just there seems to be so much. Um, we actually used, we used <coughs> Camp Dresser and McKee for the study, oh, sorry. and then we used um, Weston and Sampson for the design. Okay. Um, you know, we used, we did some internal engineering also um, with Dan Smith. He's got a lot of experience in this. He felt uh, the pressurized system, you could potentially eliminate um, up to 100% of the INI, where if you put in a new system, you would still experience leaking. Um, there's an acceptable amount of leaking you receive even if you go to the PVC. And how long would it take us to expend that twenty thousand dollars to ensure that? Well, and let me just not the let me just clarify too. They said you know you should actually the study said we should spend the next two hundred and forty or two hundred and eighty thousand dollars to study every area, and they just broke it down into sub parts. So they estimated. Twenty thousand dollars, and I believe just for Cedar Point. Just for the Cedar Point. So that's just the number kind of pulled from random. I don't know if that number would hold up. It's not like you could say it's going to be twenty thousand. <coughs> I could go out and look. It could be forty thousand dollars. It could be. It could be more or less. They don't, they don't know what that value would be. Um, and included flow isolation, smoke testing, and, and other methods of um, of looking doing more um, investigation down there. Well, didn't the firm that you hired do all that already? They did flow metering all through town. We did the whole town. We broke it up into sub areas. We didn't get that detail into every individual area. How long will it take to do a study? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I've reached out to a couple firms asking. And everybody's busy right now. But, um, yeah. I'm hoping you know we could get something in two months. I mean, you know, two months, two months, but I mean, it, it's going to require up there physically doing smoke testing and, and other miscellaneous stuff. It's probably not going to be overnight. It's not. Um, so it'll probably take like maybe a month or so for them to be able to go through to do the testing and then come back. But if I may, <clears throat> by the time another test could be prepared and a firm selected to conduct it, we will have entered the dry season of the summer, um, making the results of that test um, perhaps less desirable. So no, it's exactly. one way, so, so what, what's the optimum time of the year? Uh, spring. Fall, spring, winter. Um, some, summer would be the worst season to conduct the study, and um, that puts us in a difficult timing situation. Fall, winter. Okay. Um, do we have any idea of, with respect to the grant, as far as like, when it has to be used or, or um, the timing on the grant, I think we would be okay. Yeah. The issue is going to be on the amount of work on the grant. Yeah, the grant was for the replacement of the source system at Cedar Point. I do not think the grant would hold for the repair of the system at Cedar Point. From a timeline, I believe we are okay. We actually have the 2021 to expend it. But if we change substantially the scope of the grant, that would become an issue. Okay. So now you're looking at the timing. Um, trying to find an optimum time to undertake the study if you decide to do so. The only other thing I'd add is more than likely the quote that we have will not be acceptable after uh, 30 or 60 days, right there. Right. We would have to reject the bid. Um, go back to bid, yeah. And go back to bid after the test was done. If we were going down the same road, 
Um, and let's just say we did the, the test in October, November. We go back to bid in December or January for a spring construction. So you're talking a year uh, of inflation. If the economy stays good, it's going to go up. If the economy crashes, um, sometimes you'll get better bids, but um, we don't want that. But construction inflation, what are you saying, Sean? 5% roughly? So it's all over the place. It's all over the place. What exactly, what type of testing or what are you thinking about doing? Um, I believe it's cameraing a lot of the laterals. Okay. It's That's some smoke testing and um, the flow, right? Okay? And flow testing. Right, we did the flows. So that test is we, we, did, them, we did them in the, <coughs> in the larger the whole area. Right. So so the we point. took the point. Okay. But not individual that's a waste of money. Just, just. I don't think we should. That's, really that's what the test is calling for: individual areas to try to isolate that's, where that's, the where the service is. You've told us the problem is forty thousand gallons a day from Lighthouse Point to Rebecca, all the way back to Rebecca. Doing individual laterals, it's cast iron pipe. If, in my opinion, is a complete waste of money. Did the company look at a gravity system, or were they just told to draw up an RFP for a pressurized system? When we did the RFP, we asked for a pressurized system. And when was that? Because I forget, I Jim had said it, I was here. And um, I actually, I included, in the, I don't know if you got it in the backup, but I think they had the RFP. Was it? It was uh, June 15, 2017, was the RFP. So it was right after the town meeting where the funds were approved. So what we asked for are, for, that was for the design. We went after um, the I and I because we thought that was the most bang for the buck. And we've been chasing it for, for 20 years. Now. We have, and you know we've got a list. We've done a, a bunch of projects out there since '95, going back to an I and I. And, and, and as Tony has mentioned, you know it doesn't seem like we're, we're getting anywhere. So I, this lining of pipes, in my opinion, I think it's just a waste of time and money. In some locations, there you know there could be a you know a good application for it, but in some there's not. Right. Fifteen, seventeen feet. I was talking to a local contractor who has a lot of experience. He said that's how deep it is on the end of Pinot Drive. His neighborhood going out to Stark Road. Mm -hmm. So, I you just have to convince me, and I disagree with you. I think a gravity system could be just as effective as a pump system. I've told you guys that I, I Karen's situation in mine, it might be a little bit different. It didn't have sewer before. In 1973 or the early 70s, I can remember companies being around here doing the laying these sewer lines. I remember their names. I don't know who was watching. I'm not saying anything was done. You know, I, technology has changed a lot. I just need to be convinced that this is the only alternative. Mm -hmm. And, if, and it, if it is some type of pump system, then maybe, like Jim said, it would be a hybrid system with a little bit of both. But I just, at this time, I'm not convinced that, you know, and, and you like to build stuff. I don't think you really care one way or another. It's always getting done. Well, we didn't decide to come out and just put this out just to get everybody all fired up. You know, that's, first of all, we went, we went by the study, and one of our engineers, who's got a lot of experience in this, um, spent a lot of time on this, putting everything together. Um, but there isn't anyone in this room that doesn't want the leaks fixed. They're all taxpayers. They want it all yeah, fixed. We all, and, we all, and we don't want it, well, not us, but we don't want future boards and residents having to deal with it in 40 years. It's done right the first time. And if it can't be, fine. I just, I don't know if I'm convinced talking to the people that I, you know, do bump into in my daily business. That I'm convinced it couldn't be. That's all. I would like to look at a study of doing something different, not fixing the laterals, because it is cast iron pipe and it's going gonna, it's gonna to crack. That's, it's it's right. that's, All right, then that's even worse. Okay. Well, how is it backfilled? I mean, there's all kinds of questions you know, none of us can really answer. So. so what would it take? I mean, I don't know which one it is. 
I know one's more expensive. I know we have a grant that's exposed for some sort of loss potentially. You know, are the residents willing to pay a betterment for, you know, for the other two and a half million dollars to, to replace the system with a six million system power system instead of a three million dollar system? Um, because the, the enterprise fund can't pay for it. It doesn't have the funding for it. Um, and if we come back and they say, if we go to another expert and say, which system would you do? And they come back and say, you know, that the low pressure one is better for that area, how are we gonna do it? I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, I understand the issue with the power. I would, I mean, I, I imagine most of you have a generator anyways. No. <laughs> so clearly no one has a generator. Um, and, uh, um, so I understand power being an issue. So I get it, you know. Um, we can buy the pump, we can own the pump, we can have a stack of them over here so if it breaks, we can throw a new one in. But right, in the middle of the storm. Karen's brakes. Does she get access to that? Or oh. somebody else? No, not Karen. All right. No, I well, no. You, you know what I'm saying, though. <laughs> well, the reason I, the no, reason well, why that, I say. It's part of that area. <laughs> part of that <laughs> thing. The, the reason is this. Is this is what I said on Saturday. Is that people who have gravity system right now are going to be sacrificing to some degree by having a low pressure system with a pump, and we're asking them to pay for it. I don't think that's fair because what we're trying to do is create more capacity for other people in other neighborhoods. So when you have gravity in one area, you've had it. If we're going to have you go into low pressure, then I think the town should own the pumps, and the town should own uh, it. It be whatever it takes to put your system into your sewage into the system, the pressurized system. There was some situation that somebody may have a um, low uh, electrical panel. Down should own that, or not own it, but upgrade it so that the person can actually put their sewage into the system. So that's why I see a distinction. No offense, Karen. You, your neighborhood actually was an add on, so in order to be part of the add on, this was the system that was utilized. But for people who've had the original gravity system, we're now trying to upgrade it to a pressurized system because we're trying to reduce the ionizer and <coughs> augment our sewer system with other phases. Uh, to me, I see a, a major distinction. I mean, it's a flawed system. It's a it's a broken system. We have to fix it just like we fix right. a building, just like we fix anything. Um, so it's you know it would be it would be a precedent for us to say we're going to take pay for the pumps. We we've never done anything like that before, and all of a sudden take ownership of that as part of the system. Um, you know, no no one else has ever done that before. And to Sean's point, we'll probably next time we do it, we'll probably have to include that in any low pressure system in the future. Um, you know, I, I, I really don't care one way or the other what system's in there, as long as it works and it doesn't leak and we're not up against it at the sewer treatment plant. You know, we know that area leaks the worst in town and we've got to get it fixed. Um, you know, then you just come into the problem of how you're going to pay for it. Yeah. Um, so I have... Let me see if I can summarize. This is very complicated, and I know that everybody spent a lot of time on this. We all have, and you know, obviously, this is not a uh, you know something that we want to upset people with. But we all recognize, you know, speaking with some of the people in the neighborhood, is that the I.I. situation has to be addressed, and I think we all agree on that. It's it's to the towns in in the town's interest in everyone. So that that piece has to happen. Um, in my mind, it's a, the math here is if, whether it's the laterals only or whether it's the 50-year-old pipe with a 20-year-old liner, at some point that's going to need work. And I look at this, um, that piece of this investment as it's, we have an actual number. We know that it's estimated cost, or no, it's actually going to cost $3.177 million to do a brand new system at Cedar Point. Laterals, the main, the pumps, all of that. And we're told that that will solve 10% of our I and I problems. We know that's the number, and we know that that would replace the whole system now. We have $2.5 million offered by the state to offset that cost. So the cost to our town is whatever the difference is. 2.2. 1.2. Those are, those are all known quantities in my mind. That will give us a whole new system. We can we can do a study, and maybe maybe it is two, three, four, five laterals. 
but I know today that we can spend a million and a half dollars and have a brand new system that will reduce I&I &I by 40% and we can get it done as soon as we can get the shovels in the ground and get it complete. I agree with the, I think you have special circumstances with the um, challenges of the point and I agree that precedent setting or not, uh, the town should take ownership of the pumps, even though I own them, that's okay. Um, that that makes sense to me. Um, I also don't think that, you know, if there's a, another section of town, nobody has the challenges that you guys have. So to me, the carve out for this community to take that responsibility, I'm completely on board, and I, and I don't think that we're that much at risk down the road, because um, we can make that argument very clearly. Um, my concern with the laying and doing another study to, to so okay, maybe we only fix a bunch of laterals, is we're just going to have this conversation down the road mm -hmm. and have to fix it. And um, I'm not an engineer, I'm not an expert. Listening for the last, I don't know, year and a half I've been on the board to the experts has not convinced me that um, the gravity, that the pressurized system isn't the way to go. I don't want a pump station out on on the lighthouse point just just because I like lighthouse point and I don't think we should take the parking lot away. So there's a lot of moving parts and um, I you know I think that's just where I'm coming out on it is we know it's a known cost and it's a known result to do the whole system all at once and do it in what we've been told is, is the right, right way to do it. Any other comments? Otherwise I'd like to No we'll put it here. We don't have anything different. So, um, if I could ask a favor of you, if whoever wants to speak, you're welcome to. Uh, if you could stand up and then just kind of project so that everybody can hear, um, and you can catch them on TV, that would be great. All right, Dave. Thank you, John. You saved me a little bit of trouble because some of the some of the discussion you just had, I was going to mention uh, in a written statement that I had. So I'm going to summarize a little bit of that. But I'm going to say it a couple of times. Remember, Representative Kearney appeared before this board at 7 o'clock in the walking period and stated to you that he was asking this board to postpone the contract and do the study. He's a state representative. We had last Saturday at the meeting that Tony uh, talked about, Michael Murphy. I don't know if he is here tonight or not. Uh, but he is the state, uh, the, sen the state senator's uh, legislative aide, and he was aware of the same kinds of issues and seemed to support the position that the Cedar Point Association had. There were two meetings held in this building, in this room, one last May, May 1, and a second one on December 11th, I believe. Uh, and the association members were here. I'm going to ask everybody that's part of the Cedar Point Association of Reagan, I don't even know who you <laughs> Okay, there you go. I, I, I kind of sense that every single person who put their hand up is going to tell you, or if they could tonight, the same thing I'm going to say. You need to postpone the study, oh, excuse me, you need to postpone awarding the grant tonight and do the study. But anyway, uh, so there were two meetings held. <coughs> At both of those meetings, the, uh, the result was the same. Everybody said they did not want to go to a binder pump system. Um, we asked at that meeting to get the leak data that the town had for our part of the sewer system. We received that promptly about two weeks later. We didn't get the, and I'm not, I'm not throwing barbs either, we didn't get the video until March 5th. And that's because the DPW was busy with other projects. We understand that. But the fact of the matter is, we didn't get that data until March 5th. We scrambled over the next week and a half to put together a seven-page report outlining all our concerns and the reasons why we were not, not accepting of a grant upon the pressure system. Um, there's 120 houses out there. Yeah. The sewer system's been in place since around 1972. It's worked flawlessly. There's only been a couple of issues, and that was, in my mind anyway, the result of the installation of a water system that was um, installed out there three or four years ago. 
everybody focuses on winter storms and the, and the problems they can cause, and there's an awful lot of problems that they cause and that they will cause with a, with a pressure type of system. But there's a summer storm that occur as well. Sean has lived here all his life, so he certainly remembers Hurricane Glory in 1985, Hurricane Bob 1991, and Hurricane Tropical Storm Irene in 2011. Power was out in town for, in places for over a week. The power out down by us was out for just about a week. That means that if you have this kind of sewer system, you can't flush the toilets. You can't wash your clothes. You can't wash dishes, and you can't take showers. I don't think I'd want to be mix, messing around with people that haven't had a shower in a week like mine. <laughs> um, so, there's so many reasons why we're simply asking for two things. Again, do not award that contract tonight. Do the study. We're convinced that, and, and we understand what the sewer department is saying. You can't probably do a full study in a, in a short period of time. You're not going to have the kind of rainstorms they like to investigate. But there's high tides running um, at the end of June, July, and August. If you send your cameras down through there and you see laterals spewing out water, that's a pretty good clue that those are laterals that have a problem. So then you start to think, okay, we fix them. So, Michelle, I'd like you to maybe do your thing next. Um, Nancy Adams is with us somewhere up in the back of the room. She's one of our attorneys that lives out there. She may want to have something to say. Then I'm going to ask uh, two plumbers to speak. One of my grandsons, Corey Conrad, and Tom Gallagher, they're both plumbers that live out on Cedar Point. So, anyway, that's what I have to say. Michelle. Michelle Loring, 67, Rebecca Road. And the only what reason I got this great honor is because I've learned so much about sewers <laughs> in the last six or seven months. It's totally amazing. Um, one thing, though, that was said that I just want to clear up a little bit quickly is that the Department of Public Works asked Weston and Sampson to give them various prices, estimates, for different types of sewers that could be used out there. One of them was a total replacement of the gravity sewer. And according to Weston and Sampson um, report, it would be a total of $4.4 million. So we're talking about one and a half million more than these pumps to totally replace the system of the brand new system. In any event, everyone wants to solve the, the problem with the infiltration into the system. The Cedar Point gravity sewer may be very old, but about 20 years ago it was given a cure to place product line. And this line is good for 50 years. That's what it's supposed to be good for. And what it does is it lines the whole entire pipe to such an extent it's as if you put a PVC pipe down the middle of the sewer. And this is supposed to be good for another 30 years at this point. It was put in around 2000. The main was checked completely eight years ago. The town paid for this. They checked the whole main, nothing wrong with the main eight years ago. What was the problem? The laterals. The laterals from certain houses, especially down towards the neck of the point, were leaking. The, the Department of Public Works is recommending to you a total replacement of this system with pumps. They are implying that some engineering firm has recommended this system, and they have. They want to point to the CDM Smith report, Camp Dresser McGee report from 2016. What did Camp Dresser McGee do? They asked them to say, where's the problem in the whole town with infiltration and inflow? And so Camp Dresser McGee did that. And they said, here's the problem. And the worst problem is the point, by the way. We're 4-2 in this study. What did they recommend Camp Dresser McGee? Camp Dresser McGee recommended, in big letters, in their report, it's under recommendations, and it goes on for three pages, talking about <coughs> the types of tests 
that they recommend should be done to the sewer. They wanted, it has to be cleaned out entirely, it has to be videoed with a camera, it has to have this test, smoke testing, check the, the manhole covers. This is their recommendations. So where does the Department of Public Works get this, gee, Camp Dresser McGee recommended pumps? And I'll show you where they recommended pumps. What they are calling a recommendation is that towards the end of this report, Camp Dresser McGee gives the different areas and they say how much it will cost to test it. Then they say if a low cost estimate to repair this is this and a high cost estimate to repair it is that. They're, they didn't recommend either one. And when they did this for Lighthouse Point, the investigations would cost 20000 The low construction cost, which would be to repair certain parts of the sewer and the laterals, was 700000 And the high cost was $1,000,007. And on the $1,000,007, there's a footnote, footnote 7. And footnote 7 says this high cost is based on if you replace it, if you replace it with low pressure grinder pumps. This is the only place. This report is 64 pages long. 64 pages, and I've looked at it. And the only place that they mention the words low pressure grinder pumps is in footnote 7 of that one page, right there. That's it. Now, the this is not a recommendation, this is an explanation of a cost figure put in there. They wanted the test to be done. They wanted an examination of the sewer, a video to see where the problem is. This is like, if you go in, you're not going to have your lung taken out if you don't get an x-ray. They want to see what the problem is. You have to take a little bit out. You have to take a big part out. You take the whole thing out. But you don't just say, oh, you've got a lung problem, let's take the lung out. You do an examination to see where the problem is. We're here because of a footnote. Due diligence is that level of judgment, care, prudence, determination, activity that a person would reasonably be expected to do under particular circumstances. And it's not due diligence to say spend 2.5 million of taxpayer money on a footnote. The Commonwealth Department of Environmental Protection, which I'm sure you're all aware is the one that's in charge of sewer discharges and plants, things like this, they say the way to do it, the next step, is to do a study so you know what you're dealing with. The sewer main is in good shape and it should be for another 30 years. There's not anything anywhere that people say otherwise. You can't point to any study that says the sewer is not in good shape. <clears throat> Fixing the laterals could be done a lot faster than putting in this new pump system. And to, according to the engineer, the Department of Environmental Protection, who installed the pump system, you have to dig to the laterals anyway. Why don't you just fix them, he said. Why are you putting in a pump system? Now, last year, after our opposition to the pumps, the department went back to Weston and Samson. And they went back, not for a recommendation as to what kind of system to put in, but to find out what the cost of some of these other things are. And one of the things that they asked for was the cost that if the town takes over the, the cost of these pumps, how much is it going to cost the town to pay for maintenance and repair of problems with the pump? Can the gravity sewer be fixed? <coughs> sure it can. How long is it going to last? We don't know. Anything can happen. But with the pressure pumps, we know how much these pumps are going to cost. We know because the manufacturer tells us that they last for 15 to 20 years. That's it. We know they have problems after 10 years. And according to Weston and Sampson, with a town asked, these pumps in the first 20 years will cost the town $540,000. In the first 20 years, 540000 
to maintain and replace <coughs> these pumps. So they're not going to last. So you say, our sewer, how long is it going to last? We don't know. It's supposed to be good for another 30 years, but we know the pumps aren't going to last. Now, the individual house pumps, these pumps are so complicated that the bid that was put out took 11 single space pages to describe these pumps. I read that too. <laughs> they have things in them like check valves, anti-siphon valves, discs, rotors, shredding rings, impellers, control and alarm counts. 11 pages single space for these. They need electricity to work. And I'm not going to beat a dead horse, Cedar Point's not the ideal location for a piece of equipment like this. Basically, if there was put in to save the Mass Works grant uh, a change of scope for this project to instead of putting in the pumps, correct the problem, same location, same problem, but do it in a different way, the scope of work could be changed and the grant could be used to do it. Cedar Point for 29 years, my entire life. Um, I hold a plumbing license in the state of Massachusetts, and I work for McDougal Plumbing and Mechanical out of Milton, uh, former employee of Tommy Galvin, that corner. Um, in 2015, we experienced a powerful coastal storm in which many residents lost power for upwards of five days. Um, in such an event, which is frequent, most residents have been instructed to run water at sinks to prevent freezing pipes. In the scenario, holding tanks would become full, overflow, or back up um, into the residence, depending on the elevation of the lowest fixture or the chamber vent of that actual holding tank. Whatever comes first is where the water's going to go. It's going to seek its own level. Um, and it'll happen in a short time frame. You get 1.2 gallons a minute out of the low flow faucet. So just imagine a 100 gallon tank for 1.2 gallons a minute going into that tank. You have less than two hours before it fills up. Um, to be honest, from a plumbing standpoint, to add 120 potential mechanical failures in the ground for salt water is, seems insane to me. Thank you. Thomas Gallagher's 35 Lighthouse Road. Once you have an even one pump in the ground, you can't go anywhere else. You're at their mercy. They have to use them for service. There's no other pump that replaces their pump. It's nine feet in the ground. You can't alternate to a different pump company. So if something happens to that company, you're done for. If that company goes out of business or gets sold or moves overseas, there's nobody that's going to help them. Because there's no other pump that will fit in that chain. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. This group of people have come together on several occasions and spent a lot of hours in front of a lot of different um, members of the town and in front of Kevin Cafferty and the town administrator. And we're not here to be uh, great problems for the town. The issue from our perspective, which Michelle Loring laid out to you quite clearly, is that we need more information. No actual recommendation has been made. At the start of this meeting, a representative, newly elected, came. We also, on behalf of him and on behalf of the state senator, have asked this board to defer awarding the contract tonight. Let us do an additional study. One of the concerns we had at Saturday's meeting was what about the grant? We now know we have until 2021. So that gives us the opportunity to do the study to find out what the problem is. Maybe at the end of the day, this is the way to go. But perhaps it's not. There's other ways that, and other methods that we can use that wouldn't create such a sacrifice the people on point. So I would respectfully ask that you defer, do some studies so that we can obtain the information we need, do the due diligence that we need to do so everyone can make an informed decision and the people of the point can help the town with respect to this problem we have. 
Thank you. comparisons, you're excluding the cost of maintenance, which is why probably maybe it was originally voted because it seemed like a cheaper alternative. But the cost of maintenance now gets pushed out onto the, onto the, the customer, um, onto all of us. So when you hear it's twice as much, I, I think that those additional costs are not being taken into consideration. We'll kind of close the gap a little bit. First of all, if we have till 2021 to work on this, that's great. But I would also like to say, just with Representative Carney standing before you, saying that he can change is not a fact. We don't have a letter in hand from Senator O'Connor. We don't have a letter in hand from the Governor Baker. We don't even have a letter in hand from Representative Carney's office either. So I just want to make that clear, right? That's a goal. It's not, it's not a given. So we have to work through that too. But I want to understand what's been recommended to us from the engineers. There is a recommendation in that section where it says the source of I and I for the increased value would be with a pressurized pump system. We met internally after that meeting, after reviewing this, um, and came up with the conclusion also that the pump system would eliminate 100% of the I and I in the best, it would be the best at that time. Um, but so just from a I cost don't, perspective, right? We weren't just looking at a cost perspective. One of the thoughts we were thinking, you've got a deep sewer. Um, no matter what you have for a deep sewer, there's an acceptable, <coughs> acceptable amount of I and I that's laid in there. You're, you're never eliminating that I and I. It's going to get worse over the years. Um, and that was one of the ways we looked at it. Um, you know, and it says, in the report also, there's another section that says uh, previously repaired sewers such as Subarea 42 still exhibit excessive I&I. &I. Um, previously completed rehabilitation work may not have been as effective um, as planned. You know, we looked, we looked at everything. Um, but, you know, that's, that's where we were with it. Yeah. 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 Please speak up. Yeah. yeah to add to that, um, this project was approached as a replacement project, not as a repair project. Um, and when we replace systems, we look at uh, using today's technology and methods, what are the best systems available for that replacement. <coughs> and just going off of the phase three sewer expansion um, where uh, Sutton uh, Cansfield resides, that area was designed to be a force pressure system. It was our most recent sewer expansion and it was the best technology uh, available at the time and remains to be. Uh, as far as INI removal, uh, force pressure systems are the best at removing INI from sewer systems, um, and that gave it a, a high ranking in our meeting our goals for this project. Um, yeah, just a couple comments. I mean, we want the best system. We meaning everyone in this room, Kevin, us, if a gravity system is the best system in the room, and if we only have to fix 10 laterals, then that's what we want. Like, that's easy. It's going to cost... We'd love that. We'd cost one-tenth of the price, and it would be an easier fix. And so I, I think we, we're all on the same page. We're, we're going by the, uh, the expertise that we get from our people that tell us what to do. Kevin is even mentioning that he's ta he talks to these engineers all the time, and he picks their brain with our projects, with everything. And, and 
all of them or others of them have said that this is the right way to do it in that area. But I understand that's not in, on paper. And I, I don't have a problem doing another test to do it, but we just have to understand what the risks of doing that test are. The, the risks are we've got to be able to change the scope of the, of the grant and hope that that's accepted. That's probably not high risk, probably low to medium risk, I would guess. And then we have to accept the risk of that the cost of the project may be more. I don't know, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, but Mrs. Loring you know, said it could be four million. We've heard other people say it could be seven, eight million. I, I don't know. Um, but certainly, um, you know, that's another exposure that we have now. We know what this one's going to be, and we know that we have a grant that can be applied to. Um, I mean, just from my personal perspective, I, I would probably rather not have pumps out there, right? I mean, it's a, it's a tough area, it's a lot of seawater, and you lose power all the time. So, I think if we had our druthers and everything else was the same, we'd probably go with the gravity system, in my, in, if I lived out there. So, um, you know, not that we're going to this point, but I don't have problems with doing another test and seeing what the outcome is. But also, you know, kind of living with the fact of what the outcome is. If the outcome is that that the that the low pressure system is the right one to go out there by other experts, that we we're not starting back at square one again and 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 not getting this project done. Because every week that we don't get this project done, you know, Will's at the brink on this <laughs> at the sewer treatment plant. And we've got to get that I and I down, and this is the the bigger of the holes in the dam right now. So that's my opinion. Could I just clarify just two brief things? The the four point four million to replace the whole system with a new gravity feed system is a report that was given to me by the Department of Public Works that they were given by Weston and Sampson. On the date, what's the date? And the date on it is May 16, 2018. So may, I don't know what it is. My, my point yeah. is I don't know if it's four. I've had other people tell me it's going to be closer to seven. I don't know. Kevin, wasn't and the then, estimate for the pressure system 2.2 in that report? Correct. And it came in 3.2. Without the maintenance. So. But I'm just, I'm just saying their estimate was a million dollars less for the system we just bid. So that 4.4 is, is probably low, but I'm we can take it to 4.4. where I got this from. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. To, as to where the recommendation was for pumps. I was with Will Brandt in his office on Monday morning, yesterday morning, and I said to Mr. Brandt, I said, where is the recommendation for the pumps? Where do they mention some these pumps anywhere for the point? He says, yeah, footnote. I said, okay. He says, there's nothing else that you have you have that you haven't given me. He said, no, not a recommendation. It's that's the it's the footnote. So that's why I represented those two things to you tonight. No, I didn't question your, your comments. I, I'm just saying those are those are the variables. That's just what we have to deal with. And, and if I can just address that for one second. We could probably have at least, you know, 400, 500 pumps around town. You know, um, Karen has them, you know, and they're, and they're working. And they're working in the different areas. Um, I understand the plumbers, you know, they get the worst case scenarios. They don't get the scenario, of, hey, this has been running for 25 years and I didn't know I had it. You know, they get it, they get the calls when it's a disaster. Um, and we'll, you know, we were looking internally for figuring out a way that we could remove 100% of the INI. And, and that came up, I believe, in November. We had a meeting with the selectmen and did one of our sewer updates. <coughs> We're getting up there because it was creeping. How how do we get the most bang for our pocket in elimination? And it's stuff that we spoke about internally. We took this report and we added on to it and looked for looked for the best way that we can eliminate as much INI as we could. Yeah, um, same to me. Um, it seems to me that if you do the study and the study shows that the whole system is terrible and not just a number of lateral leaks, then you don't have to make a decision, then you go back to the, to the pumps. This is, nothing's written in stone here. Uh, we're not asking that a whole new gravity system <coughs> be put in. We're simply asking, and the town wants, and we want, the inflow to stop. Now we're all father, we're all citizens of this town. We're not asking you to put in a four or five or whatever it costs, million, new, million dollar new gravity system. We're just asking, find out where the leaks are. If it's practical to fix the leaks, fix them. 
fix them. You can fix them faster. And cheaper. <laughs> it's not practical, then we're stuck with the pumps, I suppose. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? Um, I'm sorry, David, let's go to 12 Rebecca Road. But our concern is having a system that works when the power goes out as well. Yes. Right? I mean, we, the sewer system is there to serve our sewer needs, not just to keep the infiltration out. Right? So if we have a system that has some infiltration, but it works during a power outage, that's hugely important to us. Okay. Somebody else have a hand over here? One more follow-up question. Yes. Um, just, I just want to. Um, well, this is probably for you or Kevin or any of you guys. Um, doing the study it, and somebody mentioned, I forgot to mention it. The um, it's impossible to get meaningful data at high tide, um, or do, are we really talking about a year out if we go forward with the study? Is there any way to tighten that time <coughs> and have to? Meaningful data. We could get some meaningful data from high tide cycles. <clears throat> um, there are even some sections of pipe that stay submerged even at low tide cycles. Um, so we're, we're talking about a severe tidal influence on these sewer lines. Um, I, I think that would be really important to get corresponding. And the question for Jim is, and it's really not, this is one of the challenges of obviously it's very important to your community, but uh, every decision we make affects other things in the community. So. My question to Jim is, postponing the I&I &I reduction, does that in any way impact the development in Greenbush? If this pushed it back so that we could not meet the requirement of the grant, and we had to give the money back, then you would be applying for a North Situate, theoretically, a North Situate Mass Works grant and this Mass Works grant at the same time. Chances are you would not get both. Right, but there, I'm more concerned about butting up again. I mean, we have the capacity for them. Would they get delayed if we haven't addressed a significant portion of our INI? Is that into the equation at all? Run that by me again. So I think she's worried about the plan, uh, the Drew project. If the Drew project goes, they're going forward and they start construction, and we start reaching maximum capacity at the sewer plant because we haven't addressed yeah, they, they would have to do one of two things. They would either have to do other INI. Well, as long as we knew that this project was going to happen and we move a set amount of I&I, &I, then it would be okay. We just have to know that we're going to create that capacity. The grant is for the replacement of the source system on Cedar Point. I'm not sure how much the state's going to quibble if I tell them I'm going from a pressure system to a gravity system, as long as I'm replacing the system. If I'm not replacing that system, the grant will be at risk. Yeah, sure. Okay? So, I'm not an engineer. Um, I watch Impossible Engineering a lot on TV, that's where I get all my stuff from. But I've heard Sean and I've heard Tony since I've been here saying, we have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, probably Kevin, millions of dollars on I&I &I fixes in our source system. And our I&I &I is still through the roof. They haven't worked. So it's my belief, whether you do a gravity system, a pump system, some new system that makes it disappear. I don't know, but we need to replace the system at Cedar Point. It's 50 years old, those laterals are old. It's just an old system. It should be replaced with a new system. A gravity system will take I and I out. It will leak more than a pressure system. It's just, okay? I mean, I've talked to the engineers, that's what they're telling me. And a gravity system will leak more over time, but it will, we'll get your I and I, you'll get some. You won't get the same amount. You won't get the same bang for the buck. 
So, however we go forward, it's still going to be my recommendation that the Cedar Point source system be replaced with a new source system because that's our biggest problem. And I don't think repairing it is going to get the type of I and I numbers out that we're looking for. So again, gravity pressure, that's going to be up to the board, but I still think you need to replace that system because that's our worst. <coughs> I threw you under the bus, Tony. Sorry. Um, we've done I and I repair. This town's done I and I repair for years and years and years, and our I and I numbers are still through the roof. And it's getting to the point where we need to replace these, not just keep trying to fix little pieces and see if we get it. That's just so. That was kind of my last comment, John, along those lines. So if this test does identify <coughs> leaks in the laterals, and I'm not contracting them, maybe someone in the back corner can answer the phone. So if you if you repair a lateral into a clay pipe, how effective is that going to be? You know, we saw the MBTA come into town. Almost every crossing, there were leaks in our water pipes down the road. Either way, either the road, Greenbush, all over town. After they laid the track, trains out running, we had water leaks. So I'm just wondering if this is might be kind of similar to that. How effective would it be? to make a watertight connection from a lateral to an old clay pipe. And I mean, either Leo or Tommy can answer that, I, I don't know. And that's kind of along what Jim has said. As I understand, Tom Gallagher, 35 Lighthouse Road, I understand that that main is, has a fiberglass line which is probably half an inch thick. So theoretically, you'd be making a connection between the clay and the fiberglass. Uh, and there again, without a study, here all night and say, sort of this, or sort of that, or sort of this. Let's just get study and look. Maybe, maybe they're fine. Maybe it's some other, maybe it's one pipe that's broken. Um, well, that's, that's a lot of water. Without, without, a camera, <laughs> with, without a camera inspection, I think we're <coughs> So let's draw this to a conclusion then. Um, we can either proceed forward with the contract as is. You can opt to do a study. Um, if you're going to opt to do a study, we got to do it at the optimum time. We got to. Um, if the study comes back, I think the way I look at it is you do the study, you look at the laterals. I would expect and I'd want recommendations, at least um, the options. What is the best option for Cedar Point? Albeit a gravity system or a low pressure system. I also want to know what the useful life is, you know, with respect to um, both these systems. With respect to I and I. So, you know, if you're going to put a gravity out there in the first five, ten years, it's the links are there. What are the experts telling us with respect to the long term for, for the use of the life of 50 years? Saving I and I for 10 years is not going to be the best for people who are, you know, for the remaining 40 years when you're trying to eradicate it. Um, I'd like to know the cost for both. Um, and then um, the rationale for replacing the name where we're doing the lateral. So, oh yeah, I'd like the rationale. If you're going to replace the laterals, why not replace the main or not? I mean, I think at least if you're going to ask for a study, then that's, that should detail it. If things come back and it still says low pressure system, I would assume probably two thirds of the people in here would probably say I'll go with it. The other third might not, but that's okay. Um, if it comes back and it says gravity, then you can board, can decide whether you want to. Uh, <coughs> gravity system, see what the cost is, and go from there and see whether or not the uh, grant for the 2.2 is still available for either of the two systems. Um, if the cost to do gravity is much more expensive than 4.1, maybe in the realm of 6 million, I would expect the board would have a discussion about who should be paying for that, if it's going to be, you know, the ratepayers, or whether it actually should be to go to that system as opposed to a cheaper system to the residents. Uh, personally, I'd say we we'll go to the residents. Tony mentioned about a betterment. If you wanted a more expensive system, then that's what you're going to have to pay for. If you have a cheaper system uh, for the rest of the ratepayers. But I think those are the pros and cons that the study should at least um, tell you. That's what the board would like to do. Well, and the board should be aware the longer this yeah. goes out, the more expensive, the it's, more going expensive it's going to be. You know what? We stay in the grant. I mean, we can hold the graph for a while, but it's going to get more expensive. Understood, but I think we need to do the due diligence. It just doesn't sound like we've exhausted everything, unfortunately. I understand that the replacement pressure, from your words, is 
the best technology that we have right now, but if that's not what we really need to fix Cedar Point, I want to have more of a definitive answer with regards to that. Um, so I'm, I'm inclined to favor not approving this this evening and um, doing some photolaterals, which is not what I initially came in here thinking after reading all the, the letters and everything. So, um, but that's where I stand right now. And I also, um, you know, I'm, I'll work with you, Jim, or whoever, Brad, and I'm sure the rest of the board will too, to work with our representatives to see what our options are with that grant. Well, again, I, I, can, I think I can say with fairly good certainty, the scope of the grant is a replacement. We are doing a replacement. I believe that we can deal with it. If you're doing less than a replacement, I think you would well, get it. Well, what's the definition there. of replacement? The entire system. The entire system. That is what the grant was for. Well, then that's. So once you start coming down from that, the more you come down, for the greater risk it's going to be. Yeah. Right. And I understand the board's position. Um, I think DPW has done a very good job on this. I think Dan, our engineer, this is what he did in the private sector uh, before he did soil and water work. He put his heart and soul into this. Um, the engineer, on more than one occasion, said, you don't need that, Dan, you don't need that, you don't need that type of pipe, you don't need that much redundancy. And Dan kept saying, no, we're going to put it in. We know, the da we know the dangers out there, we know the issues out there. Uh, that's one of the reasons that spec for the pump was 11 pages long, because Dan kept adding things in and said, you know, we can have redundancy, we can have a backup, it's going to be the strongest, the best, the biggest, um, because we have to make sure that this works. So, um, you know, I, I think the DPW did its due diligence. I think the contract that you have is a good contract, a good price. Uh, I am concerned that in the future this could cost us significantly more money. So I just want to make sure that the board understands that. No, is that a motion? Um, Kevin, before we close, I know everybody wants to go home because it's a thousand degrees in here. Are you on or aware of, do you understand, Will, Kevin, John, exactly what study it is we are going to be doing? Because I don't want to do a study and be told it's the wrong thing. So let me, I, I can. Sorry to belabor this, but I want to make sure he's on the same page no, that we're doing. Let me, uh, let me bring it up. Um, <coughs> what we would do is we would carry on. We would put together an RFP from the Cedar Point recommendations for smoke testing, for isolated flow testing, as, to, as well as cameraing to figure out the sources of I&I, &I, where it's coming from and also do an evaluation of the best system to eliminate that, either with a new gravity system, a pump system, uh, do nothing, or do a combined um, lower gravity system with two pump stations, one in the lighthouse and one in sandhills. I don't think is, anyone wants that. Don't think that. anyone wants that. That's not even an option. Okay. Okay. I just want to cover every option. Yeah. So, so the, the one thing that I'd add, I think John was saying this, is. I think what we have to do is get the price of a gravity system also. It would also so ask for, for if they, even if they say this one's minutely better, I think we need the price of both and then we can bring it out to the public and say it's an extra five hundred thousand, it's extra million, it's extra ten million. What do we want to do? Weston and Samson have come up with that price. What they did is they took unit prices for similar jobs for a deep sewer pipe. Um, I was. I had told Jim I think it would be more expensive because we have water on each side. If they were looking at a deep sewer pipe in Saugus and it's hundred dollars a foot, and that's what they carried at Cedar Point, I, I think there's a big difference there because it's it's tighter roadway. In in. Now, I don't. I don't really care what the number is. I just think we've got to bring it out to the to the public. No. They, they would. I mean, I think we all agree you'd rather rather have a gravity one than a, than a power one yeah. if right. you had your choice. Right. And they may have the choice, and they may choose to pay to put in the gravity. So what we'll do is we'll have cost estimates associated with that also, and um, I'd also like them to present to the board um, the findings. Great. So, Kevin, in terms of timeline, are we going to specify the timeline, or are we going to I'm, choose you know, an engineer and kind of talk to the engineer and flesh that out? I'm going to look for a little help with that from the engineer. I don't want to 
you know, commit to something in the summer months and have them make the strong suggestion that we're not going to get the, the best results. If we have to wait till the fall, we we'll wait till the fall, and, and we've lost the construction season at that point, anyways. You know, we'd have to hit it hard in the spring, um, in the spring of the summer next year. So one, Dave. I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. That's your understanding of the study we're going to do. I don't want to do the study and come back and say, we did the wrong study. So the study, as Kevin outlined, is what the Cedar Point Association or the residents are. That's what you're looking for. In my opinion, that's what we're looking for. Michelle, do you agree with that? It's the study that was recommended by so what, Camp Kevin Dresser, just went over. Right. By Camp Dresser McGee in that report of October, I think it was, of 2017. Right. That's, that's what Kevin just went over. That's what he just read. Okay. So I just want to make sure, because I don't want to be back here and have a different... Right. All right, so we're going to have... Forget, um, all right, so if the study is a replacement, it's either going to be a gravity or individual pumps. It's not going to be a hybrid. Well, the, the, the it's it's one or the other, okay. but the the shallow <coughs> sounds the shallow gravity system would need pump station. That's right. That's right. Okay. So is and this board instructing Kevin to have a study to have one or the other and not? Well, I, I believe this board just said they don't want pumping stations out at Cedar Point. Right. I might. So. I mean, Rather than the, have a pump at every house, the I woods. Like, you still have to have a better idea. You, well, if you have a, a pressure system, is the, what we just talked about. That is a grinder pump at every house. The system that's out there now, there's no pumps out there. It's a, it is a deep no, well. The question Sean has is if you have the two pumping stations, you still need a pump at every house. No, no, no. 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 Not about gravity. No. No. It's a gravity soil, but there's, there's pumps oh, no there. Okay. So it's going to push it. So it, it kind of runs down the other. If there's a hybrid system, if it's out there, Tommy had mentioned it a while ago. This, okay, I mean, I'm going to do this. Include it in our study. It kind of runs downhill to the pumping station. The pumping station pumps it up, and then it runs. Yeah. Gotcha. Downhill from there to another, then it gets pumped again and it goes. The squash hit pond and Peggy Nitro have the same kind of uh, small pump stations. So everything so runs down there and it gets pumped up and back out. <coughs> Great hand. Great. Great. Uh, just a quick comment on the whole pump station thing. Um, what would be the difference of having a pump station at Sand Hills parking lot compared to Peggy Beach parking lot or Egypt Beach parking lot? Because you're going to have one right in front of the White House. Well, I'm saying asking two, one at the end, and one the, uh, yep. to this the same But I'm just saying, this, we already have pump stations at beach parking lots. Yeah, but it's it's the lighthouse. Yeah. I can tell you right now, as much as all of you would say that's okay, you pull pool or pole. Everybody else in town, and I'm going to tell you right now, you can put that to a vote, they will shoot that down pretty quickly. And they're not going to want a pumping station. But they're not affected by it. Well, we'll incorporate it with a body. Any of it. That's the thing. Yeah. 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 Let's make a motion. We should take a vote to, to direct the DPW to conduct the study as outlined, and we will reject the bid. We're not going to be able to hold the bid. The bid's good for 30 days, Kevin, I think, or 60. 30 days. I, I might be able to send it with the 60 and 90. I, I would head, hold up as long so as we'll, we could before we'll hold on to that as long as we can, but there's a chance we could lose that. Um, or his bid, he might say, i got to increase my bid. It's your motion. Yes, a move to have Kevin conduct the study that we just discussed. Motion by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Second. Mr. Harris. Discussion. Aye. 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 All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All against? Myself. Aye. Four to one. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Back in the session, and right now we're going to go to a uh, discussion vote of 30 Gannett Road Realty Trust Jenny's uh, up sewer agreement with Ralph Constantine. Good evening, how are you? How are you good? Good. Looks as though that we finally worked out an agreement. Um, you've had a chance to review it? I did. I just had one question. Um, it said if uh, my sewage disposal exceeds 75% of the water usage. Um, 
I know my past experience, I've used as much as 90 to 95% of the water I use, I get pumped out. So I don't know where that number came from. I don't know if we discussed that or not. And I'm not exactly sure what a typical business like mine would use as far as sewage compared to water. I might have my own small infiltration issues in those tanks. And then we're going to find out because they were pumped dry before, you know, after we closed and if there was something to seal them up. Uh, but I, don't, so I could hold be... On. The, you're saying the um, yeah. disposal usage. I think if you're... Say again what you just said. Just, the reason I'm saying the water goes in and what they're saying... Say if, I use five, if, if I use 100,000 gallons, they're saying if I use more, if I dispose of more than 75 percent gallons, 75,000 gallons, I pay the full rate. That's the way I read it. Yeah, that's what I read too. I haven't come up with it. Well, this is on the difference between water usage and soil usage. How do we get 75%? Um, I've not received a copy of this agreement letter, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so I believe the methodology there is that uh, some of the water will be used for serving the customers, either in glasses um, or used in the process and would enter the sewer system. Um, and someone must have said that, that ratio is 75%. Yeah, and I don't know what it is. I don't think it's quite that low, but I think it's, it's a lot higher because adjusted. I think that makes sense. Yeah. What do you think? Like eighty-five or? Well, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, I, well, we think I was up to ninety, ninety-five percent. So, but I don't know if I had an issue. So I don't know if we can compare it to what other people are using. In this I mean, you guys have all the records of every restaurant in town. Of what well, water they they're using and how much they dispose of their sewage. No, no. But that's based on their water usage, right? right? Yeah. It's not so a real number, it's just kind of an estimate. Right. Yeah. Do you want to change it to 90%? I would love to change it. 90 would be fine. Okay. So why don't we make correction on paragraph 3, where it says if disposal exceeds 90%. Okay. That's fine. Right. Even if it did, it would only be a minuscule raise in the rate anyway. Thank you. We can shoot it out tomorrow. Yeah. Have you got sign? Okay. So we can pass a condition on. No, you just approve it with that one so change, change, and then we'll just have it for your signature. Okay. Like you can have it signed Monday night. Perfect. You just vote it. Thank you. So just vote it as amended with that one change. I'll print it out tomorrow. You can sign it, whatever. They can sign it tonight because it's a different page, and we'll fix the page. Okay. Perfect. There you go. All right. Thank you guys. All right. All right. So let's get a motion. Move to approve the. I move that the Super Board of Selectmen in its capacity as sewer commissioners vote to enter into an agreement with Ralph Constantine, the sole manager of 360 Cannon Road Realty Trust, LLC, the owner of 360 Cannon Road, Citroën Mass, whereby the property owner will be allowed to dispose of septage from the property at a rate of 0 0.05 cents um, per gallon, lower than the rate otherwise charged for septic disposal according to the terms of the agreement past year two with the amendments. So, okay. Discussed. Okay. A motion by by Ms. Curran, seconded by second. Ms. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congrats. Thank you. Uh, Ralph, one question. You did ask if you would um, kind of clean up that site. I tried to kind of crumble down again, but I will. I don't know exactly what to do there because I'm planning on clearing the site pretty quick. So, have you had any resolved with insurance and all those that you're able to start? We're, we're, well, we're still site. working on some of that, but. Um, so this was a big hurdle, and working, I have some other things going on, but working to get it started pretty quickly now that, you know, this is one of the last hurdles to overcome. Okay. Right. Yeah, what's we're, what's we're trying to make sure that the procedure is as appealing as possible. Uh, I know, so. I know, I, I was at the meeting, so. <coughs> <coughs> All right. Well, once, once it is, do you have an estimated kind of like, uh, like or I'm hoping like July. It'll, once you start taking it, it'll be fine. All right. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I know, huh? Discussion vote of Harbor Heights Road Sewer Extension. Jamie, Steve, Suzanne. I want to thank you for being back. I, I made a promise that um, we'd have you back in front of us to talk about expansion. Uh, I know you began to build your house. Um, Thank you for uh, offering that for us to come back. We appreciate that. If I refresh everyone's recollection, um, Mr. and Mrs. Mankwich own the house at 38 Howard Road. 
they have offered to install, as you know, Jamie is a, uh, a certified drain layer in the town, and they offered to install the uh, extension of the main sewer line within our Heights Road to uh, point in front of their home, about 40 feet, percent, 40, right. 60 feet, something like that, and we're looking for permission to go get into the town sewer. That, of course, the, the language is cost. It's not so <coughs> I'm in favor of it. That's why I can't add you come. You just heard our meeting. If you didn't, you're in the hall. We need the capacity from Cedar Point to do this. I know what both you and your wife have gone through over the years with the appeal on property. That you cost, that, that appeal cost you guys hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't think it's right. Um, now you're building your house. Uh, this is in the, the zone uh, phase four, which really should be the next phase that should get connected. So I'm all for it. I'll just let my rest of my board see what they next one. I look at this like a, a typical full main lot, even though the house wasn't constructed when the very uh, distance were laid out. Should have figured in a future home to be built. Uh, you just have to just extension from one home, does it does the street go up to Hazel or does it just stop at your house? And what about the homes that are beyond your house? They're they're tied in as well on those spaghetti lines. Uh, uh, one house it is but the, the house behind it isn't so okay. yeah I was I was gonna to talk to that owner and, and extend it by uh, bring it down further so they benefit from that in the future. Would that be a spaghetti line Jamie? No it would be a main trunk line, the main line was all the way down. That house is built now. That the it one is. the neighbor you're talking about. And aren't there like two more Stetson houses up there beyond you? That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Stetson house okay. at the very end. Okay. Right, right up to his house. So I know yes. he has a small piece of property with a set school and um, eventually we'll probably have to yeah, upgrade it or connect it to the sewer. So okay. So I can't I can't address this in isolation. I, you know, we've got two instances on our agenda tonight, and I, I would suggest that we as a board discuss them together, because in my, my opinion, I can't say yes to one resident and no to another another neighborhood. So, you know, I, we've got Will Beer. I don't have a problem because of the issues that you've experienced, as well as the issues that the Christian Estate folks have, have um, faced. It's capacity, right? That's the issue for me really is, do we have the capacity for everything? So if it's pending Will's approval that we can take this on, I mean, we've all talked about managing, you know, bringing those 20 homes a year on, whatever, just try to start to right size the fund and, and give our residents the opportunity to get on and not just, you know, new developments, but, um, you know, with all the numbers that we got last week at the last meeting, two weeks ago, um, where the I and I is so significant that it's taking up so much capacity that that was um, you know that's very enlightening. I don't forget the most recent numbers, but it's really changed quite significantly in the past two years with regards to the, the amount of seawater that's going in. So I just think I would like to hear every, everyone's opinion, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. I know it's probably a little bit unconventional, but I'm not sure that I can vote on. I'm just in isolation having them two back to back and they're both sewer capacity questions. So that's just where I'm coming from right now. I don't know what anybody else's <coughs> thought is I think more staff. But I, I don't have any problem with that is if you wouldn't mind just hanging out for a little bit and then we'll talk to the folks from Persimmon and we come back and, and then each one. Because <coughs> it's really the same sure. topic. No right. well, okay. But the difference is one house compared to twenty houses or right. yeah, I mean that's that's the big, I mean, how many bedrooms in the house? Four. Four, so, so how much? Yeah, I mean, I guess Well, that. what's the, what's the? About 200 gallons. 200 gallons, yeah. perhaps. Mm -hmm. And what's your sense on what we can do? We, we could certainly handle uh, one more house. Some, some, yeah, one more <laughs> house. Um, I, I would ask that the decision be contingent upon a few things, such as, uh, being located within an already planned area of sewer expansion um, in order to limit uh, applicants from other private parties uh, for entering into the sewer system. 
Uh, I would also make it like a case-by-case -case, um, acceptance where uh, uh, concerns about capacity, influence infiltration, uh, get looked at for every sort of consideration for a private extension because capacity is so limited. Uh, we don't want to run into one of our moratoriums. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'll ask you, so we don't have to ask it when Bob gets up, what's 20 houses? I, what's the number again? I don't know what's happening. Well, the, the, there's 24 in our development, but, but we have we have definitive yeses from only 10. Okay, so, okay, so what's like 10 or 20 more houses? Is that pushing it? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult to say because the biggest <coughs> factors in our capacity have been groundwater and tidal infiltration and not new developments or new connections to the sewer system. <coughs> um, new connections have a pretty minimal impact, especially since it's all new services, brand new pipes. Um, whereas, you know, comparing our figures from 2016 when we were in a drought to our averages from the years outside of the drought, the massive swing in our numbers just from weather and climate alone uh, makes it difficult to make a guarantee. Yeah, but when you're full, you're full, no matter where it's coming from. So yeah, right. that's, that's the challenge. Yeah. So are we full? We're, we have less than 10% remaining. Kevin, did you want to say something? So the only thing I was going to add, which, whichever way it's voted, I just asked that the DPW has a final say on the plans for the tie-in, so that, um, you know, if, if a manhole is needed or something else is needed, it, it has to be approved by us prior to uh, installation, whichever way the board goes. Um, that, that's all I want to say. So are we talking about just Jamie's, or are we talking about Bob's neighborhood as well? Yes. Bob, Bob just said there were 10 people on board, so I don't know how we could even entertain tying in that neighborhood. If, what are you going to just sue half of, half of them? I don't know. You'd, I, you'd have to. Well, I would, let's vote this one first, and then we can bring Bob up and hear what he has to say. Well, I think that, I mean, I, I can't speak for the I just thought about that tonight. We are in the future expansion zone for the sewer, and it is a single hole, a couple hundred gallons a day. And I think that Mr. Mankiewicz was offered to help, you know, put in that private, it's, I shouldn't say it's a private hookup, but privately installed a sewer main down the road, which will help the town in the long run when that phase is finally completed, and then be done to spec by a you know, licensed certified drain there in town. Uh, Kevin's point is absolutely you know, appropriate condition upon their approval of you know, the infrastructure being necessary. And, um, I think Mr. Mankwich has already indicated that we want to, you know, if, if the DPW wants us to go a little further, we're happy to do that. We'll do that even further. And luckily, he has that skill set. So I would ask that, um, you know, while this, this particular case is sort of a, it's a different case, it is in the expansion district already, a planned expansion district. And, Mr. Mankiewicz happens to have the appropriate skill set to achieve some important and valuable infrastructure for the town at his own cost and expense. And then what about the type of fee, Mr. Jamie? So, uh, Mr. Mankiewicz is, is asking for the board to consider that he applied for a, a, a privilege fee back in 2005, right? Mm -hmm. It was back when that fee was $5,000. So given the fact that he's going to, you know, put in all the infrastructure, he's asking if the board would consider holding that fee for him and he would pay that as the uh, privilege time fee, which is what he asked, what he, uh, he was denied in 2005, but that was the privilege fee. I say no, I say yes to the attachment and no to the deduction of the fee. Is what I would say. <coughs> I agree. I agree. <coughs> Getting attached. But yeah, they, they, it's the fee today. Uh, not the way it was in 2005. I don't know where it went. In the long run, that's going to be more beneficial for you financially. <coughs> and uh, to go through the septic system and put something else like that. Do you remind me again why this is so critical? Just like in two seconds, like why? why? <coughs> 
as far as the house itself, I yeah. mean, it will, it will, it will, uh, the lot is sufficient to sustain the septic system, but it's a very difficult system. It's a mounted system, hugely mounted system due to the, you know, the approximate depth of groundwater, et cetera, and the capacity necessary. So essentially the house gets built on a lot and the, the lot, the yard, the area is pretty much wiped out by the septic system. So this is a, a much more, uh, uh, it, agreeable scenario than the septic system. We've all seen those systems and they are, yeah. you know, when they're necessary, they're necessary, but here we, we are hoping that this is an alternative that will allow us not to have to put that system in you know, for the neighborhood as well, because it's there on site, we, they take up, you know, they, they ruin the yard, so to speak. Well, yeah. A lot of people have those, that's not a real good argument. Yeah. But <laughs> what I would say is the line runs up the street. That's, it does. It just it doesn't yeah. touch his property, does it? How close does it come? Every other street on Howard Heights Road has a, 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 there's a main one up the road. Mm. Oh. And this was a mm -hmm. lot that, as John said, was in front of the CBA, uh, James owned it for a long time, as far as I know, and and then it got through the ZBA process and, and built a home. The, so there's a the, pipe already there. Well, oh, yeah, very so close to his house, yeah. so that's. I didn't make that, I, I'm sorry, I didn't make that clear, but there's a pipe already there and it has a stub, Jamie can describe it better than me, okay. but there's a piece of the pipe that's ready to connect to the next pipe that's in front of his house, that would be in front of his house, it was anticipated that it was going to keep going, it just stopped, but, right, what's it called? It's stub, right, there's a stub that's on the manhole that's facing There's a the manhole property. and a stub in it facing yeah. his property. Yeah. I think Kevin had something. Kevin, what did you say? I, you know, I, I just had a question in, in where Mr. Mankiewicz is, is in this type of work. Um, you know, we've had the Drew project and some of the other big projects do I and I remediation. Maybe an, an alternative, and I don't want to give ideas, maybe he could reset a couple castings for Will and improve I and I in a couple areas to displace the, the value that he's going to be putting in. Um, you know, like two castings or something like that in, in exchange. And, that would make up for the I and I for the additional house. If, if the board is looking for that, I just want to throw it up there. That's all. Is that something that you'd be amenable to, Jim? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what that entails. This yeah, is right. all Greek to me. <laughs> I, I assume it's just to offset the cost for doing it. In other words, what you're doing is helping the I and I, reducing I and I. So at least two castings, which would be the ones that are like with a gasket that you would put on manual covers, say in Cedar Point, where maybe they, they need to have them replaced, um, that you could do that. And that would be a cost because obviously that's your job, so if you know you should do it, and that would offset instead of having to pay part of the fee. Is that what you're saying? I, I would just say it would offset the value of yeah. inflow that he's bringing into the yeah. system, the 200 gallons. Okay. You know, just use that as a trade. <laughs> just like Hunts Point. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just like what? Just like what? Just like what? Just like what? You don't want Jericho Road too? <laughs> well, I think that's a good suggestion. <coughs> well, on the one hand, it's just I'm paying for the, the installation of this main uh, trunk line that's going to come up in, in front of my property with manhole covers, um, and then I'm going to have to pay for the betterment on top of that. So that's that's. I'm going to be paying a lot to have this happen, to connect to the sewer. It's going to be about $30,000 for me to do this. I actually tend to agree that we're going to, if he's going to pay the, the proper benefit yeah. and he's doing the yes. infrastructure improvement, that to add a further requirement is excessive. Yeah. We yeah. Well, Kevin's idea yeah. is to yeah. take, <coughs> he's, he's going to be adding 200 to the system, 200 gallons. So do what it would have been. But paying the full penalty for it. Yeah, but we Right, but if we, yeah. I, I think I, I agree. I would say just so with the better end of the installation. Yeah. That's what we'd be looking at. Motion? Any discussion further? Are you fine with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Move to approve the extension of the existing sewer line to Harbor Lights. Road at the expense of J.B. Mankiewicz, owner of 38 Heights, no, uh, excuse me, Harbor Heights Road, pending DPW approval of the plan. And I don't know how we get Will stuff in there in terms of, well, I guess that's just our review. It's already in there. It's already in there. That it's in an existing section? Yeah. 
and contingent on being in an area that is currently in the civil court. Oh, that's not the mark. Okay. Contingent on being in an area that is currently in the cemetery. All right. So we'll come to Mr. Bignani. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Second. Second by Ms. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for the right. Thank you very much, folks. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, another question to say to you. Gentlemen, how are you? Good, how are you? Well, I'm not sure. We're not the city because you sat through the earlier meeting, so. Yes, uh, ten homes are what you're looking for. Looking well, for the opportunity to go up to 24. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 24 max. One's already in. Three, really 23. 23. <clears throat> And we've had three information sessions where we can we can confidently say that there's ten homes that would commit right away. And we don't know what the other remaining thirteen would do. See the predicament? I was you know, I guess the question is this how you envision it. Because typically if you're connected with a sewer pipe, boom, all twenty three get hit with a better bit. And they're gonna be paying it. Um, whether or not they connect or not, they're gonna they're gonna hit. Here you're you're I assume you're asking that. We only, we only uh, from my memory of the uh, plan, that we connect the very uh, so at the end of the plan, at the end of the piping system, because there's a common, there's a common, there's a common system, right? So of that, by basically plugging into the town sewer, ten people, ten homes get connected, with the option of the remaining twenty or thirteen at a future day would connect. Presumably, if they sell and they find that they have Title five issues, then they'd say, okay, I want to connect. I think the reason why I'm supporting for this is I, I think that's a danger because we might not have capacity to connect at that point. And I, it's interesting because I'm not sure whether our policy, how that policy would work because the policy is generally with the pipe in front of the house, in the street, mm -hmm. it's not there. Um, I would be on the board. <laughs> but I just think that the thought, it's an interesting kind of um, question to ask because then they say, what happens in 15 years? They say, well, I want to connect now. And we're like, we're tapped out. We're not going to be able to. And then we'll say, well, the system's right there. If, no, if, if I may, when, when we had these information sessions in the neighborhood, we made, we made clear to people that the, the, if somebody were to do that, to say, we're really not ready to do it, that it was clearly their risk that there would not be capacity at the time that they were ready, nor would the tie-in fee be the same as it is today. Right. So they ran the they ran the risk of those issues if they decided that if we were approved as a development and they chose not to tie in, they were taking on the risk of capacity and an increase in the tie-in costs. So we made that very clear to people. Don't we always charge everybody? Regardless of whether you want it or not? Well, normally you would if you put the pipe down, but here the pipes are already existing and we're only tying into like the, I don't want to say chamber or like one of the manholes, right? Kevin? And it's so, like a valve. So it kind of comes in. Everybody, it doesn't everybody have it? Isn't everybody going down to that chamber? No. There's all, some of them, all right. There's about yeah. seven or eight that would be tying in the Tilden Road in front of the school, and the infrastructure is in for them to tie into it. It's just a matter of I'm getting green lights from the town to tie in, but you know, Bob mentioned there's 10 homes that are ready to tie in now. The other people, if they choose not to tie in, each each individual house has its own set of individual uh, leaching trenches, and there's a reserve area in between them. So if 10 people tie in now, they're tied in the sewer. If the other people who choose to wait, if for some reason they can't tie in the sewer, and there's in a leaching area fails because of the age. They're, they're going to put in in 97 or 98, so they're about 20 years old now. But if they were to fail, what they do is they would have to build a reserve system on their, you know, for their... So they don't have a lateral going into the, into the main in front of their house right now? The, uh, um, 16 of them most of, yeah, go most into of the, the common chamber. Yeah, most they're not of, used right now because they have yeah. to use the leaching field. 
But the moment we, we put the common chamber online, I assume there's a valve that at some point they could yeah. turn and I mean, connect to it. Yeah. Well, why don't they just turn it? Why would they? They don't want it, it, They're spaghetti lights. No. Every, they? every house has a separate gate for the pump chamber. And the pump chamber pumps the water up into an individual reaching area. Now, right at the intersection, <coughs> there, there's a, um, a chamber there with, I think, um, uh, 16 pipes. And there are individual pipes. What they do is they cut the pipes and let the water drop into the manhole and go right into the sewer in Tillman Road. That, that part of the system is already uh, constructed. It was constructed uh, as part of the subdivision and infrastructure. The other homes that are further down the line, they would be tying by gravity into the line of uh, Tillman Road itself. So there's about 16 homes that are on uh, pump chambers, and they would all tie into the sewer right at the intersection of Persimmon and Tillman. And the other ones would tie into the manhole at the end. The last manhole in the line. Was right, so everybody is tied into the sewer, but they're not using it. They're using the leaching system, right? right? So how would we know if one of the people just threw this had a plumber through the switch and now they're going into the chamber of the street? And the only way you do is open the cover and see if there are any one of those sixteen pipes, for example, is going to cut. Yeah, well, that's that's not pretty what simple. Do. I know, but we don't go around and look and no, you don't. that's what we fill everybody and say, we yeah. say, well, go check. I do. Uh, we already have a run property there to connect, and part of their terms of agreement was that the sewer division would routinely check that location uh, for any defects or, or side effects that were anticipated, like uh, odor complaints or odor buildup issue. So you do check it <coughs> fairly regularly? Um, and probably about four times a year, just swing by, pop the cover, take a look in, uh, give a lift, walk around. Um, there's still only one that one house connected at this time. Yeah. Well, so, so you have a number of homes that are going to tie in, and then a number of homes that are not. How do you know who's who? We don't know that they won't, Sean. And again, as I as I mentioned when I was before you, we had three information sessions, yeah. and you. Know, how many people come to town meeting, no matter how many times you tell them, some people just don't show up. If, if they were to receive a letter saying, you're authorized to tie in, there's a 50-50 chance they'd say, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, so they haven't said they wouldn't. It's just a question of, you know, we don't know what decision we're going to make. And you only have 10 that have definitively said yes. Yeah. And are those 10 ones that already are piped down, you just have to cut the end of the pipe? Most, most of them. Joe and I are two that aren't. So Joe yeah, is here, and uh, we're, we're two that would go directly into Tilton. Right. So you're going to need construction work to get over into Tilton. It's already, uh, it's, well, we're there. It's, it's already yes. in the road. Yeah, it's they, very similar, but it's not part of the 16 chamber. Okay. Yeah. So I don't have to go into either street to, to do the work. Everything will be done on the one side. How is this different than the other proposal of now there are one. When I brought, no, uh, I was coffee and I was just different than, than those people. Because in my mind, these guys, sorry, I can't even say that. In my mind, this neighborhood um, has already really been accounted for, right? Years ago, when right. they were approved, they were approved, they were approved but, but years ago. Approved them? The Plain Board. Board. Uh, Plain Board. 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 Plain they're, I, I think, I just, I think I they're saying they're authorized. Right I just don't people. know if they should pay for everybody. I don't know why we just do 10 and not everyone. And then it's, do we have the capacity to do it? I mean, part of me doesn't want everybody because of the capacity issue. The other part is I don't want to have to monitor the other 18 out or other 12 houses and see if they do okay. If Can I ask one thing no, just one, so? One second. Paul, if this was being built today, is you cannot convince me that the sewer system would look like it does now. If you built it today, you'd have a sewer line down the center right. of the road. They, they, these are spaghetti lines, right? They're uh, four spades for each Who owns, owns these lines? 
The homeowners do. Okay. Where are they located? They're within. Um, are they in the private in the public right away? They're they're, they're in the easement. I don't get the point. Oh, well, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. What happens if this if this fails down the road? Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm not saying I'm for it against it. If it fails and his, it, someone buys his house and the problems in the private line and the public right away, who's paying for it? That's like construction that we don't do. It's, mm -hmm. We wouldn't approve it. If we were, if this was being built now and we were putting sewer in, it would be a lot different, correct? Is it something we're going to inherit that we don't want to inherit down the road? I, Is it James tell me the first way to go or? Probably swim the nun. The, the biggest way it would go is if someone were to be digging a trench and they broke the oh, plastic geez. pipe, yeah. either small pipes, or what they have to do is splice them and put them back together. It would be a simple fix, but you know, the question, I think the question is who pays for that? The homeowner or the town? Yeah. I mean, you have infrastructure within the private way, mainly you know, the main lines and the, the sewer manholes going into Children Road. The sewer line and children road, but everything else is on private property. I mean, the, the only reason we designed this was because of the moratorium. Right. So we, and we put it where, where we did, on the condition that when that moratorium was lifted, they wanted to tie in. Hmm. This was designed back in when? 96. Well, four, actually. 94. 94. No, I think we covered all my questions when we met last time. Um, I think it's, um, I think they, by rights, have a good claim to get tied in. Um, and it runs in front, it meets all of the other criteria, you know. Um, yeah, I'm not crazy about the idea of Will having to monitor the situation. Um, that concerns me more than anything I did. That was, that's a new piece of information I really hadn't thought about. But um, most, mostly I think that it's in their favor to be able to do this. And the board should just be prepared. Mm -hmm. People that live on the environmental road, some of these roads, well, I, that's the only one that comes to mind. But when we sewered Havley School, we put stubs from there up to the four lane intersection. If I were one of those people listening tonight, I'd be at our next meeting and I'd want to be tied in. And you'd have every right to. The stuff's for every house along the way. Well, they don't have the letter that Bob has If there's a line in front of the house and here we are letting people tie in, and, then, and that's that's fine, and, and I don't have a problem with it, but I just say yes to everyone. I think be it's, consistent. It's the policy says that the line was in front of your house. Yeah, which I am, right, Kevin? I'm sorry. I was looking at that. <laughs> I was looking at that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I can tell you're yeah, dating. Right. So if the line, the policy is that the line goes in front of your house, you have a right to tie in. If the line goes in front of your house, you have a right to tie in. I would say right. everybody on the Envino could show up at the next meeting. But, John, we, we do have a caveat with that on some force mains. The force mains, Sean told me this one was set up to have stubs. Some force mains, just because it goes all the way down the street, it's it's not conducive to make tie-ins to the force main because it's it's dangerous. It could also, as as the main pump goes, it could also fill up the houses mm -hmm. from the force main if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you don't want to just cut into a force main <coughs> that's going to have large flows. Um, you know, for example, the flows that come from the pump station, you got to be real careful just because a force main goes in front of your house doesn't automatically mean that you can tie in. So I, I can feel <coughs> So in that case, you, would you have like a sister line or something that you'd have to? We've, we've said they're not eligible. No, but te typically if you had a force main in front of your house, like Quincy, Granite Ave has a force main. If they don't have a, somebody connecting. They might have a sister line or they might have something line, else to, that goes. Otherwise, it would yeah. fill up their basement or something. It, it could potentially have a check valve gateway or something for that effect. That might be the case at Havley. I don't know. Paul, does that pump? Does that pump up in vinyl? I don't know. I can't remember that, but I remember. It does pump up in vinyl when when uh, we designed that line for the town. We we asked to size the pipe for the houses that would be along the way, 
Um, they weren't going to want to try in necessarily, but they wanted to provide the parking, so it would be large enough for them to try in the future. That's not a grab we want from the school. I no. This is this is so uh, it's up to up yeah. to four spaces in the school up to the uh, just press the intersection. So I'd say everyone on that environment is fine. Well, I just I, I just yeah. be consistent. Yeah. That's all. No, I agree with you. I think Will's breaking out in this way. So I guess to Tony's point, do you do 10 or do you say, oh, the system, do you say all 24 and then they pay because now they can tie in or they don't have to? Well, we have to anticipate that all 24 would be eligible. I mean, that's, you know, that could happen tomorrow. They go, hey, that's just great. Right. Um, so we're not deciding on 10 in my mind. We're deciding on the potential. I think you have to because even if you put a sewer line down the street, you're going to get the betterment. You can still have a septic system, of course, where you want to tie in. But they get charged anyways. I think the best thing to do would say all 23 homes are going to have to pay, whether they tap in or not. I think it's way, that's the way they, it's been laid out now, like the green bush on the cliffs. You got charged a betterment even if you didn't tie it. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they would never charge the betterment than we found out because no. we were the No. So, so are you able to say yes for 23 people or, or do you need to, you know, if we vote to give it to you to all 23 people, they're all going to be hit with a $17,000 bill. Is that what, you know, like on street acceptance, you got to get 75% of the people or something to agree? Or there's how a that? percentage. There is a percentage. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a little bit different because it's not a better minute, it's a fee. Right. And I, I think in the case of the street, excuse me, because they have to bring the street up to code, everybody has to be willing to share in that expense. Yes. Where, where this is technically, especially the way the system is designed, where, where it's easy to do, it's, it's almost easy to do on, on a come-as-you-are right. basis. Um, I don't know how you'd want to handle that. And, and to the issue of, of it ha having to be monitored, we've known a lot of the people for a long time, and I can't imagine somebody, you know, it's, I, you know, it's not yeah. necessarily, I, I, it's, 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 there it's just, you never know, there's yeah. always. But I guess my point is, if we vote tonight to give that neighborhood 23 hookups, is that what you want? Do you want all of your neighbors to be filled with that? Well, is that I, how that works when we do that? Well, it, it, that's going to be condition. That. That, is, that, is that is a question. Do you want to go back and talk to me? No, no, if you were doing mining. What's that? If you were doing mining, would everybody in mining have to pay? Yeah. That's right. yes. If that's the way you do it, that's the way I you do it. I thought they only paid when they hooked up. No. 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 The pipe goes by. The pipe goes by. You saw the pipe. You ran everyone ran. Yeah. If that's if that's the, the town policy, that's the town policy. Yeah. When I bought my house that had not been hooked up yet, but the betterment was on the it was part of the expense. Mm -hmm. But then what's gonna happen to the rest of your neighbors who aren't who aren't on board? That's an issue everywhere. Mm -hmm. But we we do when we do sections, Greenbush, the cliffs. Tell me the <clears throat> Correct? For streets. To do the better than No, we're talking about. Uh, well, the Tommy approves of the sewer. To do a project. Okay, this is kind of similar though. What? And shouldn't, shouldn't all those people or have a meeting where they're invited to to say yes or no? And then the majority will vote. Or two thirds will vote. Is it, is it, is it all? Oh, you can do that. I'm one of those, I'm one of his neighbors and. I don't want it for whatever reason. You know, is it, is, is it legal? Yeah, yeah, for whatever. Is it legal for us deciding for them? And they're not here? Or well, maybe I'm, you think about having another meeting as much as and notify everybody that we're having a meeting to talk about this because they're not here, 13 of them. And let's put it to this way if you didn't know about it, you're going to go. Get with a fee, connected connection fee. Regard, that's a big it's deal. a lot of money to be able to say, wait a minute, how come I was informed this was going to Yeah, there's one, there's one home that's in the process of being sold. Yeah. The thing was already moved out, another one's gone to the land, and then they're going to find this out. 
without any discussion. Right. You um, might think that would be a better idea. <coughs> the other wrinkle, though, is that I just, um, and this is a long question, is it, when you do the full betterment, it's because you're installing a new system and all of that. And right. There's, is, we're not doing that here. We're not fee. doing that here. This is a fee. This is just a fee connection. <coughs> what's the connection? Oh, it is. Oh, it's like, I'm sorry, how much is it? It's like 14,000. No, 16,000. And what's a better man? Oh, it's for the cost of the best man. It's for the cost of the best man. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah, so that's a distinction. Right, so there isn't a better man. It's a hookup thing. Yeah, so if they don't hook up, then they don't have the, the hookup thing. They're not charged a better man. But it's, it's weird because it's one system. So now we're monitoring components of a system. So what's the no. cost of the better man? No, no, no. It, it isn't one system. Every house is. I know, but they all come into that one chamber or they go to Tilden. There's 16 houses going on one chamber. There's 16 pipes, one one from each house, yeah. going on the chamber. So as every pipe is cut, you know, let's, let's say that chamber's got 16 pipes in it. If only 10 of them want to tie in, then you don't cut the 10 pipes. And the other six would still be going into the leaching field in front of the houses on Tillman Road. Because every, oh, every I, house I understand. is yeah. individual system. But now we got to go check the thing and say, OK, how many pipes are dirty? How many aren't cut? That's not what we do. It's not a, it's not what we want. No, but someone's not going to cut a pipe because if you do, the pump might come on while you're trying to cut it. It would be a mess. But let me ask you a question. When, when, when this was approved, Back in the 90s, the tiny fees were like five thousand dollars at the time, and they they were ready to connect, but we couldn't. Why? Why is the fee seventeen thousand today? Because you're connecting today. Because gasoline was, 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 was a buck a gallon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't quibble over the cost. But, but the difference is that there's no infrastructure to be put in the streets. Everything's being done on site. It's a matter of cutting sixteen pipes. And the, and the other pipes are in to tie their houses into that. But the infrastructure cost is covered by the betterment. Pardon? The infrastructure cost is covered by the betterment. The hookup fee is for the privilege of paying for the source system. You're paying for part of the man. So you're saying the 17,000 is for the hookup fee? Yeah. yeah. So, well, you're, you're, you're checking quarterly anyways? Yep. Yeah. Well, what do you think? 23, 10? Um, it's it's within you know acceptable limits capacity wise. I think it's a weird situation where there are several homes part of a shared vault system and other homes that aren't part of that vault system, um, and whether or not it's going to be assessed as a fee or as a requirement for them to connect, depending on how you uh, interpret the letter from the planning board. The planning board letter leads me to believe that they would be required or directed to connect by that letter, but I'm not sure if that letter uh, is enforceable to that action uh, or if they're still current. Um, if it was going to be uh, an imposed requirement for them to connect, I would suggest it only apply to the systems in that existing vault and not to the other properties that don't have lines already running to the sewer system. Um, if it was done by a fee basis, I'd recommend, you know, per per house requesting to connect. Um, but either, either way, uh, there will be requirements on these lines when they go to apply for a permit. I would require that the lines be pressure tested, make sure there's no leaks, uh, no issues with that. Uh, the actual vault that they share, there's some minor um, improvements that I would recommend to be done if we're gonna have all those houses entering that vault. Uh, the, the outlet pipe just needs to be re uh, regraded so that it's flush with the bottom of the vault uh, to prevent pooling in there. Um, and a couple other very minor requirements and gaskets and fittings and valves. So would those costs then be formed into one betterment to all homes regardless of what that then? Is that how it works? Well, those would be the costs that they would have to do. Or is it are there only the ones that are hooking up in it? That's very, yeah, that so we'll go to the association as a whole. I, I, I'm not sure how you guys work with, with it, whether it goes to, to the 10 homes that are connecting or whether it's going to be everything. That's up now, but they have to make sure that the system is ready to be connected before they actually connect and then pay the connection. 
I guess it's funny, maybe it's because it's late, but I can see it going different ways, and I think, you know, at this point, I'm, I'm inclined to say, go with the 10. The others are, are at their peril. They lose it. Um, and they may complain in the future, but, but I guess the question is, did they have notice? Are you sure you contacted them all and they're aware of it? Because um, otherwise, what you're doing in that sense is you're charging a fee to the 23, which they may not have noticed. I'd have to have noted. I'd have to know that every tw all, uh, everybody but the one house that's already connected has noticed that this is what's going to happen. At least they know. Well, certainly the house that's sold in the new family moving in has no idea. I just think that's something that they will get in the So do we make that attempt at a town to notify them, to let them know that this request is coming before the board? And You're good. Yeah. I, I, think that I just think if we're going to do it all, then we can't do it. <coughs> tonight, because I don't think they've been much more <coughs> detailed, then we can do it. I think if you, because you have a verification intent, you has, has town council reviewed the planning board letter at all? Have they provided an opinion? No. no. Or opinion on the subject? Anyway. No. Kevin, what do you think of this? I, I've never heard of such a thing. You know, um, I'm just, I'm a little concerned. I know Will said we have 10% capacity, but we still have some, you know, some stuff coming on. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm just, it's an interesting situation. It's something that you don't run into every day because they're not, um, as Will said, subject, subject to sewer. It was, it's a planning board regulation, but the sewer commission has never voted on it and said, yes, you can tie up the sewer at a future date. Right. You know, and, that, and that obviously that's why they're here now or otherwise they'd be able to tie in. And it's not a tie-in by privilege because it was it was in the planning board rules and right, you know on, on the findings, correct, Paul? Yes. So, which was preventing them from tying in. So, it's it's tricky. In the past, I've sat in front of many board health meetings, and the only way people could tie in is that their only alternative yeah, yeah. was a tight tank. And even Trisha said those work. So she wouldn't even really hmm. accept that. She didn't even want to accept that. She wanted no, to she did. She said, hey, they're, they're in Nantucket and so forth. And so that, that's that's a doable system. I mean, we had a restaurant on one now. <laughs> and so people had to jump through hoops to tie in. I don't know. I don't know what the plan was. I can only assume, like when we talk about the six phases and with the three phases that were discussed at the presentation, Will made it a couple of weeks ago that the area that we were sitting in at some point was was approved to go on. And because we were new development, once everybody was in, it should needed to be tied in because that was part of the plan for that particular area of town. We're before you now because we don't know what the remaining phases, we don't fit in any of them, <laughs> technically. So it's sort of like our phase has already happened back in 1994, which it, which I would assume is what prompted this. Your neighborhood out front, the Alphabet Streets were done in the 70s, about the same time Lighthouse Point was, and your, obviously your neighborhood wasn't built. So that was the point, it was the school at that time. Mm -hmm. So. Isn't there a stub in front of this house though? Yeah. Where, a stub in front of where? In front of their house. You know, you guys, I tell them. Yeah, I mean, you can tie in because <coughs> it's got the well, it's, 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 those lines were in, in the seventies. I don't know if there's a stub there or not. I, I, I don't even know if the school was. Somehow we can just look up. It's right. something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, aside from the vault, there are no other available stubs. There are a couple other connections on Tilden, but they were spaghetti line connections. Um, uh, I don't know the history on them, but I, I, I presume they would be like an emergency septic spaghetti connection. There's a main on Tilden in front of uh, Wampatuck? Uh, no, the Wampatuck sewer connection goes out the back of Wampatuck uh, to the cul de sac behind there. Never mind, never mind. Never mind. Thank you. So, where's the connection then? 
Like the, How do they get to the main? Like Irving. Their, their vault is at the intersection of Tilden and Persimmon and then goes down, um, I think it might be J Street or one of those streets. J Street is Irving. Irving. Yeah. 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 So the vault is connected? Well, the, yep, the vault is connected to town sewer. Okay. Well, like right there. And then from, from Persimmon Drive, the sewer line in Tilden Road keeps going towards the harbor and it stops in front of the houses in uh, this development. You know, and the last manhole is only, it's probably down three feet, it's pretty shallow, because that's a gravity line in Tilden Road. All right. Um, I'll make a motion. See if you guys like it. I say we. Um, Hook up the ten houses that want to go in and cut those pipes and let them hook up. Okay. And that's what if the other house is like this one for sale wants to tie in? They got to come before us. Second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Van Hoyt. Second by. Hold on. Second by his current discussion. Yep. Question. Yes. You know what that thirty-five acre land? Yep. There's two systems, two houses that are grabbing. How do you address those? We're not. I'm not connected to the wall. There's a second house that's not connected to the wall. My septic system is out on Tilden Road, and my line goes from inside uh, on Hickory Lane out towards uh, Tilden Road, the septic system up there. So I have a straight shot on gravity right to the sewer in the street. That was the intent. I'm saying. But there's only it's, it's already hooked just, up. It's already part of it. It's still part of it. So there's no there's, there's no digging from my house or into the street. There's no digging from my house. It already exists. Right. Yeah. So does that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you still have to pay the bill. Of course. Yeah. But, yeah. but I don't I don't I don't want to I I don't want to see an issue where we're trying to compare a gravity system to a force uh, force pain system cutting off a pipe into a vault. We're not all the same. There, yeah. there, is, there, are, there is an A and there's a B. Yeah. So we will look at each case individually and, and figure out the best way to talk. Right. And see if we have capacity. Motion by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Ms. Curran. Um, obviously that motion subject to review from the DPW and ensuring that it's... And the recommendations by the, by the sewer. Department here, the sewer division that will be listed on March 15, 2019. So that's what the motion would also be. Okay. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> move to approve a sewer connection for the 10 homes of Cushing Estates pursuant to all sewer rules and regulations and other applications belong as outlined in the sewer department memo. That was a great one. Perfect. See how good you are. Oh, so that I see our, what? Just what our I said. speech at 10 30 at night. That's why you get the flowers. And that's Will's number. He's the boss of it. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, well. Yeah. Um, motion by Mr. Vignani, second by me. Ms. Curry. Okay, thank you. If I, if I vote for this, I'm going to vote for other ones that are very similar to this, and I'm going to fight for them as well. So noted. Oh. Someone came before us three times and was sent back. But we're also still waiting for Will to come to us to say, with the revenue model, how many, you know, hookups do we need a year to make this a, a break-even operation? No. So there's going to be 20 a year that we've got to pull into our system on our current infrastructure for money. It would zero I and I, I'd like to think. Right. Not zero I and I, you have to remove I and I. Uh, they're, not gonna, they're not going to add to the I&I &I problem. These systems will be... Oh, okay. But they're going to add flow to the system. So you're going to have to take I&I &I out of the system to right. make right. capacity right. for these. Right. So Bob, you want to fix a manhole? Learn more about super than the last time. All in favor? By way saying aye. Aye. Anybody? No against? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but, um, but um, yeah, there, I'm sorry, but there is one question. Is, can you provide us with a list of the homes that will be, so that he knows what he's looking for? Yeah. Yeah.
So you know who to build it. Yeah. It was part of our requirements <laughs> that they yeah. identify every line. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do it by line. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Actually, how do you go? Take a bottle and swing All right, we're going to move on to uh, 855 discussion vote 21 draft to add release of a restrictive covenant. Uh, Jim, is there anything you presented on, or is it just basically no, documentation? Just so evidently there was a house that was on Bradford Ave that had been raised and reconstructed. I don't have the time. And um, as a result, when they rebuilt it, they were restricted uh, because of the sewer moratorium. And they were only allowed to have three bedrooms. Uh, now that that has been lifted, evidently they must be looking to expand uh, to have four bedrooms. No, uh, two bedrooms. What's that? Two bedrooms are allowed. Two are better, so now they're looking to expand, <coughs> and they want that condition or the restrictive covenant removed from their deed so they, they can do it. And they have paid the betterment, right? So well, that's not an issue. Are they on the sewer? Yeah, yeah. since 1977. And connected well, it's to just like a new hookup. No, I'm saying you're adding capacity. You're, you're adding a bedroom or two? Yeah. That's something we should talk about in our rules, regulations, and things like that. Because I mean, yeah, right the betterment they paid was probably $5,000. Right. Was was there, should there be a fee associated with it? Was the betterment <laughs> assessed at the number of homes it could tie in or the number of bedrooms per house? I got it. 1970s. Yeah. The betterment is based on yeah, I guess the so. pipe and the distance in front of the house and divided up by doesn't Units doesn't have something. to do with the bedrooms in the house. Okay. Right. They've already they've already paid it to them. Um, right. Right. And the current one doesn't take into effect the size of houses. They're already there there's already flow there. Yeah. And anybody who's connected to a town sewer right now could easily increase another bedroom or two if they wanted to. Here, because of the restrictive covenant, they're not allowed to. And all we're doing is removing, trailing that back because of the moratorium. They paid it. Mm -hmm. That's how I was doing. So the motion's ready to carry on the paper? So is there any further discussion? Or? No. Nope. All right. Assign the one article for the special town meeting, which is this Monday, May 13th. Um, so, uh, if it's okay with the board, I would like to take this opportunity to say that I would like to hand that article, my final article, town meeting. You go. Um, <laughs> and I'd be honored to do it. So, I'd ask the board. I make a motion that Chair and John Dennis be able to a special town meeting one article in town. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Kevin. Well, thank you. Hi, guys. Do we need more? Thank you, John. I don't know what else to do. We want another record. So, that should be it. Any other discussion? I'm going to be waiting. I'm time for that. I feel bad. That's it. That's why you're here for it? Jeez, please. Dr. Bikes is saying, do a good job. Yeah. You'll do a good job. I know John will do a good job. Yeah. All right, um, 9.15, order selecting policies and procedures at 10.52. Could we read through those? You want to take another time? We can go one at a time. <laughs> I 
could have called you in the morning and told you who was going to be. These are the word we like. Well, I'm not clear on which version here is. Is it the last version? There are three different pieces that I read. There's one edited, one unedited version. There's one with John's comment in it, and there's one with Karen's comment in it. So is the red line John's? Yeah. It's not the corrections, not taken. You don't like this John does. One says Danny at the top, one says Danny. Yeah. And the other is the same shape. So there were, yeah. There were a number of um, general things yeah, so that both of us that um, Lorraine outlined in her summary um, that maybe we should at least spend well, a second on. I mean, if we put it off for a week, we can just ignore all of John's comments. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, my comments are the ones that say, you know, um, so this was drafted in 2017, and of course, the comments that I was working on at the time, Jim was in our town administrator, was that the role of the selectman, I, I think I deleted a lot of what was in there. But I kind of like what you deleted. Well, that's my whole point. Um, Not it, kind of, I do. It's, it's important that the board has, uh, I'll put it to you this way, the charter is very pro-town administrator. It's one of the strongest ones we have in the state. Jim said that, Trisha said that, and we see that. I, I think, you know, for purposes of the roles of the selectman, we can really, our roles are really diminished or our strengths. That's why I believe that section basically did contact the department head to talk to them. I mean, we should be able to. That's the whole point. That's if it gets out of issue. hand, then the, the town administrator has every right to tell us that we're stepping over our bounds um, because the domain of the employees are under the town administrator. But I think that we should at least have that opportunity to talk to them. Um, I do think it's important that the town employees then communicate that to the town administrator, too. I think that's fair, but I do think that we have every right as elected officials to be able to talk to town employees. Sorry, I can't talk my time's bleeding. <laughs> so anyway, I'll tell you what, well, well, we can always post I had a little different take on that, is that I, um, I question things like inefficiencies. So if we get, you know, six phone calls over the weekend about a broken traffic light, we just want to let Kevin know about that. I don't want to go through Jim for that. That's ridiculous, just to let him know. But the way it's written is I tell Jim, and Jim tells Kevin, and or if I talk to Kevin, then I got to notify you that on something routine that's just yeah, routine. This was actually a question, I don't know, it was Sean Atoni when I had my interview. I think it was Sean. I said, you know, if there's a pothole or a street layout, yeah, call the department, email the department head. That's sure. fine. I don't need to be involved in that. But you can't have five individuals select me going into the department and say, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, I want this done, I want that done, um, and, and try to run the individual departments because it's going to overload them. Right. Um, That's not fair. We have contradictory instructions. Yeah. So, you know, I, I never got on people for calling a department and saying, hey, I just had a quick question. So that, yeah, our, our rules and policies, that's why we should discuss it. I don't think we should, I, I think our we deserve to protect the town administrator from rogue behavior or inconsistent behavior. It's not good for the departments, but we, it shouldn't be a blanket. You don't get to talk to them. I mean, there's a middle ground. I think, I don't know how we can revise this to say, maybe we just say that on routine matters that don't require town minister input or contradict the mission of the department, there's no reason the slot man can't be in contact. Don't laugh at it. You're saying it could be like an A and R lot. It doesn't need the approval, but you have to approve the fact that it doesn't need approval, so <laughs> you have to get my approval to talk to things, to things that don't need my approval. You can do it that one. No. I mean, no. And again, I, <laughs> department, you guys are in town hall, you talk to the department heads, and that's well, you, not my... But these are policies that are set forward. I mean, when I read it, it kind of felt the same way. There were a few really strong things that were a little okay. too aggressive. Well, this was drafted in 2017. Right, there was. Yeah, which I is know. why I felt there was a little... I would have put that in also, though. Well, so this is what I want to say. I like, I don't want that. I want the Conceptually, I get it. That's my question. Yeah. Jim, you know, obviously you've read through this policy. Is this something that you think is needed? And <laughs> you know, it, it's like when I'm doing a union contract, 
you, you put stuff on a union contract that doesn't apply to 99% uh, of the people who work for you. Um, it might not apply to anybody who works for you at that time, but you put it in because you never know when you're going to get that, that board member who is going to be, well, I don't care. I'm a one of the selectmen. I'm going to be with the DPW. They're going to pave this street. I'm going to tell them what to do. Um, and, and then I, do, the town administrator has nothing to back them up saying, no, you can't do that. That's not allowed. Um, so you, you need to have a policy for when you have, again, this is going to sound bad, when you have a rogue board member who is outside, you know, the board says, Four members say we're going to do this, and the fifth member says, well, I don't agree with that, so I'm going to go around the department heads, I'm going to go around the town administrator, and I'm going to get what I want by going to the department head and saying, if you don't do this, I'm going to, I'm going to get you. Um, and, and the department has only recourse is either come to me or come back to the board. So you do need these policies and procedures so a board member knows, this is where I'm supposed to be operating. Yeah. And, and a couple of things I think we need to make sure we go through and scrub it to be gender neutral. There, there are, while well, most places it says his, her, there are some yeah. um, areas where it says her. So yeah, I try to make sure that that's all a little, you know, that we're, it could be on purpose. That we're taking out. Um, I also, under appointments, I actually disagree with your changes there, John. Um, uh, so it's page 9, but page 145 out of 179 tonight, so where are we looking at? Yeah. So um, it's in blue. The reason being that, sure, our objective is to handle new appointments in May, but let's be reasonable. You know, last five years that I've been here on the board, it just doesn't get done. There's too much going on. Sure. And I think it's it doesn't make sense to set an unreasonable expectation. So I don't have a problem with July and effective August, as was originally written. I think, Lorraine, you had some input on that as well, right? Yeah, I can revise that. But in the main points we need you to talk about tonight are the four. Yeah. The, these four main points are the things that, you know, both John and Karen gave feedback on yeah. as well, being a problem. The other thing, like, you know, to your point, the appointments and being gender neutral. I can go through after your feedback tonight and make all the changes and send you like a final draft. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so the priority items were major discussion points that were identified, which you just talked about, and I think you decided to leave it in. Um, we got on board a second one, was going directly to the department's employees. Page five, uh, three, item B. Yeah. Uh, individual board members making statements to the public before talks are discussed with the entire board was another yeah. big issue. Page five. Page, Page five, five, item three, item B. Yeah, that was the one, I, my notes were not clear, you know, so we're talking about the senior center, can we not, well, we have talked about that. So I think, I think if there's, a, if there's a distinction in a hearing, if there's a hearing coming to the foot board, you should not be discussing anything. You've got to wait until you have the hearing, all the information's there, because you're making a really kind of like a judicial, quasi-judicial vote on that. You know, I guess you're right. You, you don't necessarily want to prejudge things, but there are times where you hear things, you know, like this is my position. Yeah, these are um, But this is what, what is this? Number? I don't know. I guess it's hard to say. I mean, you, you try not to prejudge something, but sometimes you hear things and you're like, that's my position on it. Yeah, I mean, look, if somebody, I as an elected official, can make a promise to whatever I want to promise. I'm not, I, I'm not encumbering the board. I'm, it's like me. It's my opinion. And if I'm ill-informed, well, then, then that's just unfortunate if I'm ill-informed. Like, that's on me as an individual. So I think 3B should be stricken um, because any, hopefully, reasonable, good, intelligent representative, elected official, would want to hear the pros and the cons. Like, that's just basic. And to restrict my speech because I haven't heard all sides of the story is 
not something that I really Agreed. feel is appropriate. You're, you're not a you're judge. Not a lawyer here to give you a you're not a judge here to on. make a decision right. where you need to be impartial and, and objective. I mean, generally you are, but you hear from constituents, you hear from neighbors, and they're saying, yeah. absolutely, you might say, this is my feeling on it. I mean, the hope is that you are objective and listen to both sides without being prejudiced or biased, but I think you know, that's part of the point of being elected. Exactly. Is to take represent. positions on this. Right. And right. You can't be elected and say, well, I, I don't have a position on that. you got to take positions. That's kind of the rule and nature of a selected. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And as Maura yeah. says, you're not, if you meet with somebody and say, I absolutely agree with it, that's crazy, we need to talk about it. The other four members may not agree with you. You're right. not. That's okay. Well, I think it's you know, and that's restricted. I think it's too. All right. All right. Three B strike. strike. Right, guys. Yeah. Are you okay with that, Mister? Huh? He's not okay. What's he next? Okay. The next one was media relations discussion, page nine. Mm -hmm. um, Which one are we working off, by the way? The John's red ones, or? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Which is I work on the unedited one. I compared the edited ones. Page what? nine, media relations. Oh, Where's that? I, know I, said. <laughs> I think it was yours, actually, Karen. Uh, I think the media relations discussion was Karen's. Yeah, because I mean, I had no problems with it. Oh, I thought it was. Uh, and yeah, I know Ruth likes to call, you know, Maura all the time. <laughs> say, what? And then Sean. I, I never get called much, but. Uh, I'm fine, you guys. Uh, I just had I, I just had comments on the media. You didn't have social media? I thought that was a separate thing. No, it was a separate thing. Um, yeah, media relations, I don't have any issues there. Oh, you know, John, the only thing I added was I thought that um, as a matter of practice and maybe as a protection against rogue, Jim says, is um, board members will defer statements to the press, to the chair, as practical or, or his, design, his or her designee as practical. The only reason why I say no is because sometimes you know, yeah. if you want to know more, I'm not available, or you're not available, and sometimes I think <coughs> somebody has more knowledge, like Sean had on the Sioux expansion of the asset. Right. I'd rather go talk to Sean because I feel like I'm going to talk to Sean. I'm, it, to Jim's point about road members, um, is this, so that's why I said, is, as he's ever designated or as practical, um, there have been other communities where, like, if you for it was a four to one vote on something, and the one who dissented went out and and, and made it a very loud statement. It did not reflect on the board's decision appropriately. That was my concern more than anything. I mean, I'd much rather you know grab that microphone, but I think. When it's a that. statement from the board. <laughs> well, that's yeah, a good this point. just says press releases, yeah. though. So um, that was that was my suggestion. But this, this talks about a, a press release yeah. that's issued by the board. That yeah, this is the position of section. the board. Right. Right. I mean, the, if the board voted four to one on something now, and you voted against it, you have the absolute right afterwards to tell Ruth. Yeah. This is why. I you know, I agree with them. I think the board's crazy. They're out of it. Blah blah blah. That's your opinion as a member, but you're not speaking for the board. Yeah. And I think this is more of a policy dealing with speaking for the board because, again, individual members, you're elected officials, you, you're entitled to your opinions, you're entitled to vote how you want and express those opinions. And sometimes it will impact or, or reflect poorly on the board, but you're not speaking for the board. I think that's the distinction that they're trying to draw. Okay. We can say that in there, right? Yeah, we can clean yeah. it up a little bit. Jim and I will take some good notes. You may, oh, yeah, I like that. That's better. Okay, and then the last one was there's nothing in there about social media. And yeah, that'd be a good thing. We have a social media policy. That, and give all credit to Marie. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have a social media policy that's uh -huh. separately, but the selectmen don't sign that. Right. Yeah. I think it's something to consider. Yeah. Well, we have some legal obligations, so I could write up some words for your final review, too. Right. Well, that's what our counsel told me about my page, is I had to very carefully make sure that, any, that it was clear that I was speaking as an individual, just like that. That's a good idea. A reflection of the board's 
Okay. Right. And other yeah. board members cannot go on the other page and say, you're right, Karen, I agree with you. Right. Open meeting or open Because yeah. then you're going to open meeting on that's violation. True. So right. it would make, that would help board members to know. And if you're going to have a page, you can't publicly deny anybody access to it, too. So I understand. Yeah, so As a public yeah. official? As a public official. It's a public official page. You can't, can't block anybody or anything like that. that. I didn't know that. That's good to know. See you Monday. Okay. No, go home. Nancy, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sean says I've done block of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I have okay. a Nancy. Okay. So right. um, I'm going to take your comments and revise a final draft. Okay. Can we go on Tuesday then? Maybe. I mean, Monday 13th meeting, maybe. Okay. I think that's, oh, that's a good idea. Let's, let's review it before the town meeting. In our nine, our six yeah, days. you guys got nothing to do, so why don't you? <laughs> I'll try to get it done for the May 13th. Oh, you don't care because it's not going to bind sometimes. We can boil this down. All right, I have the excited back then. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, Mr. Chair, we're going to take a look at the Well, you can go home too. Lorraine, Old thank business you. taken care of. Let's get to new well, business. We still have all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. get to, um, let's go through this. We need to do one day. Um, Wine and malt licenses. Move that the Board of Selectmen approve one day wine and malt licenses to lavishly done catering for an event at the Citrus Maritime Center on May 10, 2019, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Do we just read off all yeah, of them? Okay. Yeah. Lavishly done catering for an event at the Citrus Maritime Center on May 19, 2019, from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Second. Lavishly done catering for an event. Just um, okay. so we can do them all at once. Huh? He's doing a consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Lavishly done catering for an event at the Lucky Fake Cafe on June 1st, 2019 from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Well, that's a motion to move the board of second approval one day wine and malt license. Uh, motion by Ms. Kerman, seconded by now you want me to second. Mr. Second. Vignani. Mr. Vignani, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Move the Board of Selectmen approve one day wine and malt licenses to Reba Restaurant for an event at the Citrus Maritime Center on June 21st, 2019, from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Motion by Ms. Kerman. Second. By Mr. Vignani, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Move that the Board of Selectmen approve one day wine and malt licenses to Reba Restaurant for an event at the Citrus Maritime Center on July 28, 2019, from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Motion by Ms. Kerman. Second. Second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I can't believe it's summer already. Discussion on the new drain layers, uh, layers of license yeah, for like Walsh management. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the drain layer license for Walsh management. Well, second. second by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. Hmm. Now we're going on to um, discussion vote board and committee appointments. Um, really should be right? These are really quick. I printed them for you just to yes, make sure they're right here in front of you. Can I read yes. Go ahead, Karen. Do you want to do it? No, you go, girl. <laughs> All right, move to appoint the following individuals for term of one year until the successor is named. Agent of Veterans Benefits, Donald Knapp, Archivist Betty Foster, Assistant Town Accountant Mary Sanctini, how do you say that? Sanctino. Custodian of Tax Title Property. Pamela Abitalabi, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, custodian veterans Graves, Donald Knapp, Fair Housing Officer Jim Drone, Fence Viewer, Paul Murphy, Field Driver Neil Dudden, Licensing Agent Sergeant Ger uh, Gerard Gerald O'Brien, Local Auction Permit Agent Pam Abitalabi, <laughs> Mass Bay Transportation Authority, Al Banger, Metropolitan Area Planning Council, Brad Washburn, South Shore Recycling Cooperative, Sean McCarthy, South Shore Regional School District Representative, Jack Manning, Surveyor of Lumber slash Measurer of Wood and Bark, Al Banger, Tree Warden, uh, Michael Green, and Veterans Agent, Donald Knapp. Motion by Ms. Kerman, I mean Ms. Stanfield, seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, next we'll move on to, is there another one for? There's a separate piece of paper. For the waterways. Yes. And also, um, <coughs> the reappointments of Brian Kelly and David Friedman to the Waterways Commission. 
Oh, move to appoint move to reappoint Brian Kelly and Dave Freeman to the Law Boys Commission for a return of three years until a successor is named to completion of the conflict of interest law following training program is completed within three years. Motion by Mr. Harris, seconded by Second. Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Uh, Aye. I don't know, Mr. Friedman, wow. Move to appoint Rick Barber. You think that just commission <laughs> for a term of three years until a successor is named and completion of conflict of interest law, online training programs completed within 30 days. Motion by Second. Mr. Harris, seconded by Mr. Vignani. Discussion. Discussion. I just want to point out that we have had Mr. Murray's application here, so I just think it's important to note that publicly. Um, he has been here since January. He's mm -hmm. the only applicant that we have at this time for this position. And he's out of town, otherwise he'd be here tonight. Okay, okay. Mr. Danny, he's awesome. And he has not missed <laughs> <laughs> He has not missed a meeting in two or three months. He's been at every one, correct? That is correct, right? right. Okay. Uh, that's good. Good to have Rick back. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, move to reappoint Conley Ford. The board of registrars for a term of three years until the successor is named and completion of the conflict of interest law. Online training programs completed within 30 days. Question by Mr. Harris, seconded by Ms. Curran. <laughs> you only have one more day that you have to say that name. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Congratulations, Donna. Good, good for you. Yay. Um, thank you very much again. Good night, Curran. Come along. Good night, Curran. All right, liaison reports. Uh, Any okay. liaison reports? Just three quick things. Tomorrow, Senior Center, uh, Council on Aging, Senior Center Record Facility, um, last public information session at the library at 7 o'clock. Um, and of course, everyone knows Monday is uh, town meeting, and uh, next Saturday is town election. And don't forget Mother's Day on Sunday. Talking to Jake Miller. <laughs> Isn't there a requirement? Yeah, <coughs> Mother's Day, yeah, it's Fireman's yeah. Mother's Day race in mine on Sunday yeah. morning. I, I don't have the time. Actually, you have it. You have it. Should yes. be. We have had nothing but rain. Right here. Uh, they, uh, 12 o'clock, mine at uh, Beach Parking Lot, the Citrus Firefighters Local 1464 Mother's Day race. Oh, I'm sorry, it starts at 8 a.m. and goes till 12. It's a wicked fun. 8 a.m. So you get out of the house and let your mother sleep in. That's the whole plan here. Yeah. <laughs> um, any liaison reports, if not? Uh, the golf committee is uh, going to be presenting to us in the next meeting or two for their capital plan and operations. Um, they're doing a great job. And Sister City Cork, we met with them last night and we are getting all geared up for our trip, our trip over there and all the, all the meetings that we have and all the... What date is that again? Date? June 10th. Anyone else? No? I think we did the correspondence, right? Yeah. Yep. Approval of the minutes for April 23rd, 2019. So moved. Motion by Ms. Canfield, second by... Second. Ms. Curran, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Finally, motion to adjourn. And sign documents. Sign documents. Motion by Ms. Canfield, second by Ms. Perrin. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Folks, good night. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah, well done. And I just think if John